aged between 8 and 13. Two other teachers, 54-year-old John Adrison and 82-year-old Hugh Henry, had already pleaded guilty. Hugh Henry was found dead on a railway line in Amersham two days ago. The Deputy Prime Minister, Nick Clegg, who attended the school in the 70s and was not among the victims, said he was appalled at the gross betrayal of trust that had taken place there. We'll stay listening as Pete Saunders from the National Association for People Abused in Childhood will be speaking to Ian here on BBC Three Counties Radio later in the programme. Now, a Hertfordshire dog owner whose King Charles Spaniel was subjected to an unprovoked attack now wants the dog licence to be restored. Susan Smith from Welling Garden City also wants the animals to be kept on leads on pavements. And in nearby Hatfield, town councillors have been forced to replace swing seats because it's alleged owners of aggressive dogs allow their pets to clamp their teeth into them while being pushed. Councillor Kim Langley, though, says it's a waste of resources. Swing seats should last for a long period of time and it's a shame that money is being used to replace equipment that has been abused by the minority of people. A terrorist warning's been issued by the security authorities in America ahead of the start of the Winter Olympics in the Russian resort of Sochi. They say an attempt may be made to smuggle explosives hidden in tubes of toothpaste onto civilian planes travelling to Russia. Here in talks between Transport for London and unions involved in a 48-hour strike on the London Underground will take place tomorrow. The industrial action's being called in protest at the closure of ticket offices. People in Kenston, meanwhile, are worried their fire station may become part-time. Beds and Hearts Fire Service is now looking to save money, but has denied any final decisions have yet been made. Well, Jamie Newell from the Fire Brigade's union says losing full-timers is likely to put lives in danger. The changing of Kempston from being a whole-time station, which is full-time, to retain status, which is part-time, is not a downgrading because a firefighter is a firefighter. But what it does do is it affects the attendance time because there's an increased duration while you wait for the part-time firefighters to come into the station, get their kit, get on the appliance and go. And in sport, Jamie Mackey and Darius Henderson scored as Nottingham Forest won 2-0 at Preston to seal an FA Cup fifth round tie against Sheffield United. So it is bright to begin with, but then we're going to get lots of rain. Temperatures reaching 9 degrees Celsius. Get the latest news and sports online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Now, uh, you are a very, very... If you're nothing else, Serena, you are very honest and direct Yeah. in certain aspects of your life. Great. Do you... Yeah. Do you think... Anybody noticed that I muffed up at the beginning? In a word, yes. Ouch. I've seen the figures. Not many people noticed. Morning, this is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Lots to talk about this morning. If you want to get in touch with the show, I shall give you the details in a little bit. Some of the things we're talking about. Big story there. You heard the former head teacher of a Buckinghamshire boys school be sentenced today for historic child sex offences. We'll have the latest on that. A Wellham woman is calling for all dogs to be kept on the lead in public after her rescue dog was attacked. She wants a change in the law. Do you back her? And Tony Fisher, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> I was just I was just coming in to help you. By doing ballet? No, by uh, telling you what was on the programme. Did I cover it all? More or less. Thank yes. you very much I indeed. I was going to say that anyway. Thank you very much. Oh, and and Tony Mortimer from E17, Andy from CBBS. We're living the dream, dear listener. Facebook.com forward slash BBC3CR. You can send me a text, 81333, start your text 3CR, or you can give me a call, 08459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio.
Finley, BBC Three Counties Radio. Lots to talk about this morning, some very light and some like this next story, actually very, very dark. The former head teacher of a Buckinghamshire boys' school will be sentenced today for historic child sex offences. Roland Peter Wright was among a group of teachers who abused pupils at Caldicott School in the 50s and 60s. Our reporter Tony Fisher has been following uh, the story. Sentencing is today, Tony, but Roland Wright was found guilty in December last year. That's right. Uh, the 83-year-old from Crown Lane in Farnham Roll was found guilty of abusing five boys aged between 8 and 13 by a jury at Amersham Crown Court. He had denied 10 charges of indecent assault and two of indecency with a child at a Caldicott Preparatory School, which is where Nick Clegg, the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, went. Um, Roland Wright was headmaster there for 25 years until his retirement in 1993, and he committed the offences between 1959 and 1970. Uh, he'd been cleared of three other charges at an earlier trial. Uh, the police, Detective Sergeant Joe Banfield from Thames Valley Police, said at the time uh, that this result would not have occurred without the support of the many victims and witnesses in this case who bravely gave evidence and provided statements. And you mentioned uh, Nick Clegg uh, used to go there. It, mildly diverting, but he has issued a statement, hasn't he? Yes, Nick Clegg went there between 1974 and 1980. Uh, at the time, in December, when uh, he was found guilty, he said he was appalled at the news that his former headmaster had been convicted of child sex offences. He said, I'm shocked and appalled by the gross betrayal of trust and violation of childhood innocence that has been shown to have taken place at Caldicott. Uh, these reports, he says, will disturb everyone, but most especially those like myself who were pupils at the school and were entirely unaware that such abuse was taking place. Um, there are pictures, incidentally, of him uh, either side of boys who were abused. Um, I can only imagine the devastating impact that such abuse must have had on the young boys who were affected, and my heart goes out to them. Roland Wright being sentenced today, he was due to be sentenced alongside another former teacher at the school, but, but that's not happening now, is it? No, that's not happening. Uh, 82-year-old Hugh Henry, who lived also in, uh, who lived in Amersham in Pomeroy Close, he pleaded guilty to gross indecency with a child and was due to be sentenced with Roland Wright today. However, uh, he was found dead after being struck by a train close to Amersham, Amersham Tube Station around 6.30 on Tuesday night. Um, so two days before he was due to be sentenced, um, and I understand that he leaves behind a wife and daughter. And you were telling me earlier you've been speaking to a former victim of Roland Wright. Yes, Tom Perry, um, who we will hear from after 8 o'clock. Uh, he's from Amersham. He attended Caldicott from 1963 to 1970, 1967, and he was the first former pupil to file a complaint against a Mr Roland Wright. Um, he said people are appalled when they hear of sexual abuse. Uh, we, we suffered and shocked at the failure of some staff who worked at the school to report what they knew or suspected. Many parents have a mistaken belief that things have changed since our day, and this is our point, this is his point rather, but still no law requiring staff working in schools who either suspect or know of abuse to report it to anyone. There's still no law to that effect. Uh, and he says in this respect nothing has changed in the last 50 years. Um, he's campaigning under the At Mandate Now uh, banner saying there should be mandatory reporting of abuse at all schools and he says a law is urgently required uh, to ensure that schools and other institutional settings make any such reports of known or suspected abuse to the local authority. Now the government and the NSPCC don't take this line and we'll be talking to him about this later on. Uh, he said had mandatory reporting existing when I was abused I and others who attended this school are confident right would have been stopped long ago even as a 10 year old I question why the captain of rugby who traditionally sat at Wright's table in the school dining room took morning tea to his bedroom and often then failed to return to breakfast my innocent mind could not explain it I merely thought that's what I'll do to, that's what I will have to do if I become captain indeed he said that's exactly what happened Tony thank you very much indeed a terrible story 08459 four double five five double five. Talks kind of late. 
BBC Three Counties Radio. Should dogs be kept on leads? I'll tell you the answer. Yes, of course they should. We'll discuss it more after the travel with Alice. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Good morning. We've got another day of strike action on public transport today. First Capital Connect have service suspended between Finsbury Park and Moorgate and those aren't expected to run until 8 o'clock this morning. On the Northern Line, trains are running on the Edgware, High Barnet and Mill Hill East branches and it's hoped the line will be fully operational from 7, although some stations will remain closed. On the roads, we've got no problems at the moment, but the A40 London bound is likely to be busier than normal. It was yesterday, as many people drive in while the strike action continues. I'm Alice Gloss at BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much. Right, 6.16. It's Thursday the 6th of February. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. The former head teacher of a Buckinghamshire school will be sentenced today for historic sex offences against children. A Hertfordshire dog owner whose King Charles Spaniel was subjected to an unprovoked attack wants the dog licence to be restored and all dogs to be on leads. And in sports, Nottingham Forest won 2-0 at Preston to seal an FA Cup fifth round tie against Sheffield United. Get in there, my son. Spank their backsides. Naughty, naughty, naughty. The Three Counties Radio. Very macho. Every weekday morning from nine, the JVS Show. Well, whose fault is it that there are so many fat people in this country? It's a horrible word. Jonathan Vernon-Smith. But why do you want to kind of tiptoe around the issue? People are people. People aren't fat just because they're big. Tackling your consumer problems. Over the last few months, I've been palmed off every few days. There are some absolute rogues out there yeah. in the car industry. Tim, I'm going to send uh, Wayne in yes, to you. Let's get some details. And we'll get okay, this sorted out. The JBS Show, weekdays from nine, BBC Three Counties Radio. Speaking of it happening, eh, you see, a heart was not really a connection at all. A Hertfordshire woman is calling for a change in the law to force all dog owners to keep their animals on the lead in public. And do you know what, Catherine? She's absolutely correct. I'm supposed to sit on the fence and be impartial. I can't. I've got two young boys, and the number of times we're out in the park or in the high street, and a big, massive dog comes up to them and sniffs them and scares them, shouldn't happen. Well, Sue Smith will be pleased to hear that. Good. Well, Susan Smith is who we're talking about. She's from Welling Garden City. She also wants the district council 
Council to bring back dog wardens after her King Charles Spaniel was attacked and left needing stitches. The owner was given a stern talking to by police. A stern talking to, but wasn't prosecuted as the dog had no previous. Is this for real? Catherine, you've been looking into this. What, what, what do we know about this dog attack? Well, it happened about a fortnight ago as Susan Smith was walking her dog through Crossway in Wellin. Another dog came running out of someone's driveway, clamped its jaws around Susan's dog, whose name is Buddy, and a little King Charles Spaniel. Um, Susan said she couldn't free Buddy from the animal's grip and watched in horror as the dog was shaken around, in her words, like a rag doll. When the other dog finally let go, Susan's dog needed stitches. I don't get this thing about the, other, the, the dog owners not being prosecuted. No, police were called and they came out and spoke to the dog owner. Susan and tells us they were given some strong advice but as the oh. dog hadn't done anything like this before, no further action was taken. Oh, for goodness before sakes. Before we go on thinking this is some kind of bull terrier mastiff sort of dog, we're talking about a Labrador here, yeah. I don't know whether that makes any difference but there you go. Uh, Susan is clearly not happy about it and she feels that there is an increasing threat of this sort of attack because animals are being trained for aggression in her area. She feels dogs are being used as status symbols and potential weapons. And the fairly recent removal of dog wardens in Wellin as part of cost-cutting efforts, she believes is allowing it to continue. She wants them back. So she's contacting Wellin Hatfield MP Grant Shapps as well as the Borough Council to see what might be done. Um, and she's also pushing for a change in the law that you mentioned there at the top of this story. Um, and she's going to tell you more about that in about an hour's time. She wants to bring back dog licences too. Meanwhile, in Hatfield. No, I was just... And she, and the, yeah, she wants... The, 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 I was just thinking about this thing about um, being taken off the lead. There yeah. should be places, of course, when dogs can be taken off the lead. They need to be exercised. And, uh, but, but not when they're walking up and down the high street. Not near kids' play areas. Not where, where there are kids or people. In America, there are dog parks, aren't they? You yeah. You put them in and it's an enclosed space where dogs are allowed to do what they want. But It gets me so angry. I was just telling you off air, we were playing in the, the swings near us a while ago. And this woman, I think she was an au pair. And the, the boy she was with. Uh, and had this massive dog. And it was on the other side of the fence but it kept running up to the fence and barking at the kids and the boys were terrified and I said to this woman she was just like kind of ignoring it and I said excuse me I think you should put that dog on a lead please because it's scaring the children it just seems ridiculous dog owners are a, but, well, they're a particular breed. They're quite selfish, I think. And they, oh, but my do, my but dog wouldn't hurt dog anybody. Very well. and, and I think they really believe that. I've been walking down the street once with, with my little children, and but they were very small at the time. And a dog came hurtling towards us, barking its head off. It was a sort of Jack Russell type yeah. dog. So they're quite yappy anyway, but it was barking its head off, running towards us with kind of intent. And my kids sort of shrank behind my knees, and yeah. I'm sort of standing there. And the owner says, "Oh, she's all right." Really? Well, I don't know you and I don't know this dog. Yeah. My kids are terrified. And, and, yet, and this is a street. The dog may be all right. My kids aren't all right yeah. now, thanks to you. Thanks very much. Exactly. Uh, uh, meanwhile, the dogs in Hatfield using swings. This sounds like a fun story. Well, it does sound rather jolly, but How it's cute. not quite that. Ah. It seems that some owners are using playgrounds to train their animals. You might have seen it on YouTube and stuff like that with dogs oh. hanging off ropes. It seems the swing seats in some playgrounds in Hatfield have been damaged by dogs' jaws. The dogs grip oh, on boy. while the owners push them around so that their, their head is strengthened. We're going to be hearing more from one of the town's councillors, Kim Langley, later on. There can't be anybody listening who disagrees that dogs should be on leads pretty much most of the time. We'll, we'll, find, a, we'll find somewhere for them to go off leads, but, but they should be. 08459 four double five five double five. On a happier note about kids, exciting day today. Very. Exciting day today, Kelly Betts. Do you know who's coming on the show? Um, are we, have we got more Tony Fisher? No, uh, well, probably... We've got Tony Mortimer is coming on at oh, half past eight. That's close. And Andy from CBeebies is coming on. Who? Sorry? Who? Andy Day from CBeebies. Andy's Wild Adventures. It's a brilliant programme. I love it. It's br- it was a bullfrog yesterday. It was a bullfrog! <laughs> he had that, that foldable spade, didn't he? Yeah. My, My daughter said, why is he getting wet? I said, well, he's in, he's in the pond, clearly. We, um, we didn't see the bullfrog because we had to go and have uh, supper. Oh, he did the point. noise. He did the... Of course he did. We'll, what, we'll get him to do it on air this morning. Now, my boys are big fans... Your girls are big fans. Yeah, and they think that we're friends. Yeah, well, yeah. That's I mean, the other thing. That's what I've said as well. Uh, but So we've got them to record... Basically, this is the toughest interview Andy is ever going to do. We've got them to record the questions. Yeah, not since um, Fern Cotton interviewed Tony Blair will you hear such probing questions. Do you want to hear one from uh, my eldest? Yeah, go on. Um, let's have this one. How do you get in the other programme, Andy? <laughs> How do you get in the other programme? Um, why the echo? Is that the East Wing That's <laughs> recording it? Well, then I got my, uh, my youngest, who's two. I, w- I wondered if he wanted to ask Andy some questions. Uh, Would you like to ask him a question? No. <laughs> there you go. No so he wasn't that bothered. What about my two-year-old? Where, uh, she's very good. Where, whereabouts she's very today? Good. Let me she's find a, those. She, she's very media-friendly. She, she, uh, mm. I did chase around a bit and sedate her with a cookie. Hang on, what's this? Father Christmas. Here we go. Uh, no, she's number. 
Uh, okay, let's uh, let's have uh, this one. Okay, so this is your this is your eldest or no, your youngest? Little and she's two. Here we go. My favourite mumba with two. What's yours? Fantastic. Favourite mumba. It's the toughest interview he is ever going to face. I hope he's gonna, swatting up. He better be good. We're gonna. I like this. Also, I do. Yeah. I heard let loose on the way into work as well. Oh. We can bear that on. Yep, we'll have it. We'll have it. BBC Three Counties Radio, 08459 455 555. Hey, you got a dog, put it on a lead. It's common sense and it's arrogant of you not to do so. We'll talk about that and more after we get the latest travel news with Alice. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. In Dunstable, the A5 is slow going around the roadworks there at Church Street. 
And on public transport, we've got another day of strike action. First Capital Connect has service suspended between Finsbury Park and Moorgate. Those aren't expected to run until 8 o'clock this morning. And on the Metropolitan Line, after 7, trains will run every 10 minutes between Harrow on the Hill and Aldgate. This is Alice Gloss at BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. I'm Serena Farrow. The former head teacher of a Buckinghamshire school will be sentenced today for historic sex offences against children. Meanwhile, a Hertfordshire dog owner whose King Charles Spaniel was subjected to an unprovoked attack wants a dog licence to be restored. Elsewhere, talks between Transport for London and unions involved in a 48-hour strike on the London Underground will take place tomorrow. And people in Kempston are worried their fire station may become part-time. Beds and Hearts Fire Service is looking to save money, but has denied any final decisions have yet been made. That's the news. Now let's turn to all the morning sports. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Football first then and Jamie Mackey and Darius Henderson scored as Nottingham Forest won 2-0 at Preston to steal an FA Cup fifth round tie against Sheffield United last night. Cricket and the former England captain Michael Vaughan says the ECB must do all they can to ensure that Gary Kirsten succeeds Andy Flower as England coach. Flower actually stood down as England team director last week. It came after a disastrous Ashes tour of Australia. Rugby and England will announce their team for the Six Nations match against Scotland this morning. Tennis and singles winners for Heather Watson and Joe Conta helped Great Britain to a 2-1 win over Latvia. That was in their opening Fed Cup group match in Budapest. And finally, 2014 Winter Olympics is now upon us. Starts in Russia this morning with great British athletes competing in figure skating and snowboard slope style. Apparently it's making its Olympic debut. BBC Three Counties Radio, more from me at seven. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Right. Now, we're, we're playing songs. We're playing some good songs. I, I, this just, I saw this on the computer and I thought, yes. Let's have some of this, shall we? We're dealing in classics today. Dearest, darling, I had to write to say that I won't be home. Anymore, for something happened to me while I was driving home, and I'm not the same anymore. Oh, I was only 24 hours from Tulsa, only a day away from your arms. I saw a welcoming light and stopped to rest for the night. That is when I saw her As I pulled in outside of the small motel She was there And so I walked up to her Asked where I could get something to eat And she showed me where Oh, I was only 24 hours from Tulsa All of a sudden I lost control as I held her charms And I caressed her, kissed her, told her I'd die before I would let her out of my arms For I was only 24 hours from those Only a day away from your arms Somebody knew 
what can I do when I can never, never, never go home again? Catherine and I are discussing a wonderful movie, Target Audience, um, that we've both seen. You saw it last night. Yeah, thanks to your kind gift. I bought it for you. I got it sent to you. It's, it's, it's generous. It's uh, yes. uh, the pop singer R. Kelly. Yeah, not he, R. Kelly. She's through there. Yes. He's made a movie. Yeah, well, yeah. did he? Yeah. Or did he just get a few buddies around and make some stuff up? Uh, uh, K- K- Kelly, you're um, uh, young. Have you seen R. Kelly's Trapped <laughs> in the Closet? Yes. Have you seen it? Yeah. Kath watched it it's last night. Hilarious. It's like a rap panto, isn't it? <laughs> it's the most ridiculous, self-indulgent work of art I've ever seen in my life. And it goes on forever. Yeah. Which, no, because I think you had the first 12 chapters. Yeah, I, I there, thought that more. was a joke, that there weren't going to be any more. I mean, who commissioned that? There's like another 25 chapters. <gasps> But the first time, great. But what's brilliant as well? Did you, did you watch the um, director's commentary? Uh, I don't think so. Right, you've got to watch the commentary on the first one because it's him in a cinema, <laughs> right? And he's watching Trapped in the Closet. And on director's, he obviously is, doesn't understand the concept. On a director's commentary, they'll tell stories about the making, about what it was like working with that actress, where he got her from. That that day we had, I remember we had uh, prawns for. But he's not. What he's doing is he's watching. He's going, hey, <laughs> that's me. Now in this movie. I'm trapped oh, in the closet. I I <laughs> and he just describes what's happening on screen. Ridiculous. I'm trapped in this closet because uh, I've been making out with that lady, but uh, she's not my wife. And he just, desc- he just tells you what's happening. If you haven't seen it, imagine this. A GCSE English class, <laughs> a drama class, right? The girls get put in one group, the boys get put in the other. The girls come up with something. The boys just <laughs> make something up in two minutes before the end. It's that. It's, that. <laughs> it's brilliant. A midget. A in midget. my closet. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. Anyway, we've got more serious things to talk about. I liked about. it when you did the southern accent for the cop's wife, though. She's <laughs> saying, baby, have a pie. You don't like cherry pie. <laughs> <laughs> then I realised she was allergic to cherries. <laughs> i got to stop the film here, because this... What is it? What's that bit? i got to stop the movie, because this bit is so twisted. <laughs> <laughs> a midget. A midget. A midget. Jonathan's in Luton. Morning, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, I'm in bigger bed, actually, but yes, I'm working in Luton. Well done. Good for you, sir. Good for you. I've had a message from Tony Fisher. The last three minutes of radio is just noise. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jonathan, yeah. you are a very talented young man. You have taught yourself how to play the pianola. Yes, I have indeed, yeah. And you, you claim you can play anything... Just by listening, you listen to it, you can sit down and with a little bit of kind of working it out, you can play it. Well, yesterday we yeah. set you a challenge, didn't we? You did indeed. Can you play Tupac, or as I like to call it, Bruce Hornsby and The Range? Could you play this? We played this to you. We're all miming it here now. Goes higher. That was the challenge, Jonathan. You've had uh, about 23 hours. Let's hear it. OK. First thing you saw, can I a bit out of key? Oh, oh here we, we go. Hey, hang on. Secondly, uh, I spent about an hour doing it last night because I do have a daughter and stuff, so I do have a life. <laughs> but here we go. This is what I managed to learn just from listening to it, OK? OK. Can you hear that OK? Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. OK. <laughs> Oh, it's going so well. I'm sorry, I get a bit nervous. Ah. Don't, Jonathan, Jonathan, calm down. Don't be nervous. Jonathan? Would it help if I wrapped Tupac over it? No, that would that would make things worse. Jonathan, don't be nervous. We're all friends. He's made a right pig here of this. Well, actually, he? he's doing pretty well, considering he doesn't read music. C- Catherine says you're doing very well. Don't be nervous, Jonathan. We're all friends here. Sorry about that. T- take a deep... Yeah. No, don't. Hey, listen, don't apologise. You're being an excellent sport. Take a deep breath, close your eyes, and just feel yeah. the music. Sorry. 
Some of that, Jonathan. Oh, well done. Oh. There's the chorus. There's what? There's the chorus. Hang on. Oh, blind. Oh, he's taking right, it to the chorus. It's just the way it is. I wake up in the morning and I ask myself. Some things will never change. What did you think about that? Hey, come on, Jonathan. I think you've been a cracking sport, and I think if you did that all by yourself, uh, do you do yeah. you live with people? Uh, I've got my fiance and my uh, daughter. Yeah. Well, I, I apologise to both of them profusely for inflicting that upon them, but I think you did. I thought he was great, wasn't he? Was really good. Really good. You're an excellent. Well, the time I had, I, I did my best. No, but listen. That's just from listening to it. Jonathan, I, you did a crack it. Did you listen to it at home, or is that just from listening to it on the radio? Yeah. No, no, no. This isn't just at home. I just. Uh, went online, went on iTunes, good and for I just, um, you. you got it, yeah. Well, but I, yeah, yeah, I just... Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> deeply envious of your talent. I wish I could. Kelly wants to say something, Kelly. Oh, well, I mean, he only heard the song yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You played it to him on the radio live, yeah. and that was the first time he had heard it. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan, yeah, Jonathan, it your voice sounds familiar. Have we met? Yeah, we have spoken before in the past, yes, yeah, a couple of times. OK, I thought I recognised your voice. Well, listen, yeah. you're a really good sport, Jonathan. I appreciate your time. Thank you, but the main point I wanted to make, oh, really, was yes. the fact that... Anybody, anybody can learn to play the piano. You do not need lessons, and there's the proof. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan. What a good sport, you see. That was really impressive. That's going to inspire Paul Scoynes. It might inspire, it might inspire some little kiddie on a car on their way to school as well this morning. That's an hour's work. Yep. Well done. Well, well, we're saying well done to Jonathan. Great stuff. We've got Martin. Is it Martin who's doing it for us next week? There was another fella. Mickey. 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 Mickey's going to do it next week. Mickey, who thinks it's two pack, will he be able to come anywhere close? But he's got a week. I don't think that's fair. I don't think Should that's you only fair. Only an hour as well. He was. Go- I'm impressed by that. It was that you could tell what it was. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, my dad. My dad used to get me to play things to him on my violin. He go, yeah, um, and and that was. What was that? Tony Fisher is, is upstairs in his building. He's really questioning the whole point of the show this morning. Oh, good. This is just noise, and then why? Why? Shall we have, shall we have a song? Yes. And then we'll do... We've not looked at the papers yet. We'll do the papers in a bit, shall we? Yeah, go on. <laughs> Friends, it's fun to lose and to pretend she's overboard, she's self assured. Oh, no, I know a dirty word. Hello, 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 how low? Hello, 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 how low? With the lights out, let's dance. I feel stupid, contagious, here we are now, entertain us, I'm a lotto, an albino, a mosquito, my libido, yeah. I'm worse at what I do best And for this gift I do feel blessed And our little group has always been And always will until the end Hello, 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 how low You have got to love. You've got to love Paul Anker.
There can't be anybody listening who doesn't love a little bit of Paul Anker. There's a letter missing from his last Whoa. word. Whoa! Gabe, he's not a banker. Steady on. That, that's cracking. Why did he do that? Frank Sinatra's favourite singer. Don't care. Frank Sinatra, the boss. The boss of the corporation. What was he called? The head of the corporation. The chairman of the board. That was it. The chairman of the, the board. The CEO himself. A number one. Old blue eyes. I've got an idea for a phone-in. I've not oh. finished the sentence. Wait, I've got an idea for a phone-in. Yes. Songs that should have been left alone. Call me now. 08459 455 555. How disrespectful. Travel news for beds, hearts and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. In Bricketwood, the North Orbital is heavy going at the M25 Junction 21A roundabout. And on the speed sensors, the A40 is queuing London bound around North Alt. On public transport, First Capital Connect has service suspended between Finsbury Park and Moorgate and that isn't expected to run until 8 this morning. On the Northern Line, trains are running on the Edgware, High Barnet and Mill Hill East branches. It's hoped the line will be fully operational from 7, although some stations will still be closed. This is Alice Gossett, BBC Three Counties Radio. <laughs> Thank you, Alice! No, thank you, Catherine. It's 6.46. It's Thursday, the 6th of February. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. The former head teacher of a Buckinghamshire school will be sentenced today for historic sex offences against children. Two people have been charged with attempting to smuggle £160,000 worth of cocaine into the UK via Luton Airport. And in sport, the Winter Olympics start in Russia this morning with great British athletes competing in figure skating and snowboard slope style. Ah. Oh. 08459 four double five five double five. Let's get the weather with Elizabeth Rizzini. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Hello, very good morning to you. It's going to turn into another very wet day again today. Right across the Three Counties, in fact, we've got a Met Office yellow weather warning. Urging us to, well, be aware that we're going to see plenty of rain again through the afternoon into the evening. That weather warning is valid not just for today, but also on Friday and on Saturday too. Now, despite all of this, it is a dry early start. It will stay dry through the morning rush hour as well. Uh, Perhaps just a few showers around here, but lots of dry weather too. A little bit of brightness. Then the rain is going to come up from the south through the course of the mid-morning into the afternoon when it's going to turn really quite heavy. And it will be heavy too for the evening rush hour, handily enough. Now, temperatures at the moment, not too chilly at the moment at around 6 or 7 degrees. That's probably where they'll stay for most of the rest of the day. Afternoon highs of 7 degrees, 45 in Fahrenheit. Not quite so windy today. The gusts of wind not so strong. It's more about the rain, but the winds will pick up through the overnight period. The rain is just going to keep on coming, basically. We're probably looking at just under an inch's worth of rain for most places. That's on top of what we saw yesterday. And lots of saturated ground out there, of course, already. Now, as we head through into tomorrow morning the rain is going to turn more showery there will be some showers around through the morning rush but a drier day in general with some spells of brightness perhaps even a little bit of sunshine about particularly through the afternoon some still quite blustery gusts of wind though it's going to turn very stormy again surprise prize on saturday some strong gusts of wind and more heavy rain in the forecast that's the weather Every weekday from three, Roberto Peroni. Milton Keynes is smarter than your average city and the borough has now been named as one of the five places invited to a Smart Cities Forum. With the best local news stories. Bedford Hospital's leadership has been described as weak in a damning independent report into the problems in the paediatric department last summer. With the best local talking points. An ordinary postman from Watford had a dream that one day that he would raise enough money to build the first free independent hospital in his hometown in Pakistan. After three Three years of campaigning, hard campaigning, Houghton Regis Leisure Centre Swimming Pool had been saved and will in fact be reopened. Roberto Peroni, weekdays from three on BBC Three Counties Radio. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. We ought to do some work. Yes. What have you got in the papers? Um, I can hear... Is that Travel Ice Gen still open? No, it's closed. I heard it going beep. It's closed. What's going beep? Just your head. All right, okay. Stop. Come on, do some work. I did not have sexual relations with that man. All right, Catherine, we'll talk about that later on. Says Liz Hurley. Oh, that's right. This, this, I don't know. Does it? Does it seem right to you? She is. Let's let's uh, discuss this. It's twenty first century Britain. I think we can have this discussion openly and honestly without anyone making judgments. Okay, Liz Hurley 
How fit is she? I mean, seriously. She's a, she's a beautiful woman. Isn't she? And she knows how to make her Wah. face up. Hey, yo- yoghurt is the key to beating diabetes. Just one pot is that a day. From the no, it's from the Daily Express. Oh, same thing. Just one pot a day slashes the risk of disease. Eating a pot of yoghurt each day could warn off diabetes. Yeah, so could jumping out of the fifth floor uh, window of a building or you smashing your face with a hammer. Or so could eating a he- you know, healthy diet with lots of balance. Regular eating one pot of yoghurt can slash the chance of de- developing type 2 diabetes by 28%. OK. How come the Daily Express get all these exclusives on how to... On cures. S- cures. They've cured cancer, di- uh, um, uh, uh, arthritis, diabetes today. Incredible. Are they talking about Wendy Deng? Uh, they've not mentioned Wendy. Who, who Wendy Deng? Wendy Deng is the wife or ex-wife, ex-wife. of Rupert Murdoch. And listen, if you're going to be uh, somebody's ex-wife, don't be Rupert Murdoch's ex-wife because he play nasty. And he owns papers. Yeah. You might expect a teenage girl to wax lyrical in her diary about the fine physique of her latest crush. Apparently they found notes that she wrote to herself about her inner thoughts on Tony Blair, who's been a family friend and the godfather of her child. But they're really weird notes. They are notes that you wouldn't write out loud if you were 12, never it, mind if you were 45. It's, it's wor- If you were to crack open your teenage daughter's diary and read it in there they would be better structured than the notes she's written. Also, if you're carrying on with a close family friend... Who's Prime Minister? You don't leave yourself a little post-it lying around telling everyone that you think he's hot. What does she say? Well, she swears a little bit on it, but it's a mild one. Oh, sugar, oh, sugar. She's not saying sugar. No. Whatever, why am I so missing Tony? Because he's so charming and his clothes are so good. He has such good body and he has really, really good legs. But, and that's not with one T. No. And he's slim, tall and good skin. Pierce blue eyes, which I love. Love his eyes. Also, I love his power on the stage. Oh, and what else? God. And what else? And what else? It's hardly Byron. I'm, I'm getting a little bit uh, raunched up for TB at I'm the moment. I'm getting a little bit thinking that she didn't write that. Have you seen the picture of that, um, ha- ha- those two houses that blew up yesterday? Yes, what's left of them? It's inc- Well, there's nothing left. Isn't that incredible? An explosion, they think it's a gas explosion, do they? Yes, gas blast terror uh, in Essex. And it was on the news, and I was kind of thinking, well, why is this, why is this taking up so much? It was on Five Live a y- lot yesterday. I think, why is this taking up such big news? And then you see the picture. You see, wow, those houses do not exist anymore. No. It's incredible. And that potential is in all of our homes for that to go wrong. But your home, your house is so much bigger than... Than that, isn't it? Yep. You see it reduced to a pile of rubble. It's your sanctuary, it's your haven, you know, it's the place you go to and you feel most relaxed and that's completely well, it's, wiped out. It's where I live. It is. It's actually where I live. It is. It uh, is. Obesity is a matter of self-indulgence. It's not a disease. Says who? Says Leo McKinstry, Daily Express columnist. Uh, I used to wonder which milestone of 40 I would reach first, my girth or my age. In the end, there was no contest. Increasing corpulence meant that my waistline was the easy... Basically saying if you're fat, it's your fault. He got fat. And now he's thin, I I imagine. It's one of those. Now I'm thin again. Tony Blackburn's defiant broadcast of forbidden Cliff Richard songs got him temporarily suspended from his job, did it? So when radio bosses eventually overturned... Tony Blackburn of BBC Three Counties Radio, I think you're referring to, yes. You might have expected a grand gesture of gratitude from the singer, but it seems to Cliff's idea of a big thank you amounts to half a bottle of champagne. Hey, Cliff Richards! He's got his own vineyard. He could send him a case. Come on, Cliff! Blackburn, now 71, defied controllers at Classic Gold Radio, Classic Gold Radio, in 2004 when he played Summer Holiday after a bout of sunshine. So it was apt. It was the the right time to play it. Despite the ban, which ruled that Cliff's music did not match the station's brand values, the DJ continued to play his tracks because of positive responses from listeners. I love Tony. Isn't he the nicest person in the world? He is so nice. You know, sometimes you think that's that might be a, a persona. A lot of people uh-uh. in show business become that thing that's not really real. He's not. He's just a nice bloke. One, one final thing. There's a big advert here in the, the Express, and it's probably in other papers. Paul Hollywood, get your bake on. And he's doing a tour. There's got to be, what, 50 <laughs> dates here. He's playing the Hammersmith Apollo, I think. Paul Hollywood, get your bake on. Join the artisan baker for an evening of fun, stories, yeah, I bet we won't get all the stories, demos and audience participation. So hang on, people are going to go to venues such as the Reading Hexagon. I'm trying, trying to see if there are any, um, I can't spot any local ones, but there will be one, some somewhere. Uh, the, the Milton Keynes Theatre. To, let's go. Let's go. Uh, to, no, what, to watch a man cook? <laughs> is, that, is that the plan? I don't think they're watching him cook. Ah. <laughs>
C3 Counties Radio. 08459 455 555. If you've got a dog, it should be on a lead, for goodness sakes. We'll talk about that and more after we've got the latest travel with Alice. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On public transport, on Chiltern Railways, all lines to and from Marlebone are currently blocked, which may cause delays of around 40 minutes. On First Capital Connect, service is suspended between Finsbury Park and Moorgate. Those aren't expected to run until 8. That's because of strike action going on. And on the roads, the M25 anti-clockwise, queuing between Junction 21 for the M1 and 20 for Kings Langley. And the A1M southbound, slow at Junction 7 for Stevenage. I'm Alice Gloss at BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Alice. So, you got a dog, you take it out, put it on a lead, for goodness sakes. If you don't do that, you are being very, very selfish. We'll talk about that and more after the news. Serena. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Headlines. Former Buckinghamshire schoolteacher sentenced for historic sex offences, attempts to smuggle drugs in golf clubs via Luton, and MPs say plastic bag plans are a mess. BBC Three Counties Radio. The former head teacher of Buckinghamshire School will be sentenced today for historic sex offences against children. Roland Peter Wright was amongst a group of teachers who committed the offences at Caldicott School back in the 1950s and 60s. Lee Agnew has more. A jury found Wright guilty of abusing five boys aged between 8 and 13. Two other teachers, 54-year-old John Adrison and 82-year-old Hugh Henry, had already pleaded guilty. Hugh Henry was found dead on a railway line in Amersham two days ago. The Deputy Prime Minister, Nick Clegg, who attended the school in the 70s and was not among the victims, said he was appalled at the gross betrayal of trust that had taken place there. Well, stay listening for more on this story as Pete Saunders from the National Association for People Abused in Childhood will be speaking to Ian Lee here on BBC Three Counties Radio straight after this bulletin. In other news this morning, a Hertfordshire dog owner wants the dog licence to be restored after hers was brutally attacked. Susan Smith from Welling Garden City also wants the animals to be kept on leads on pavements. Well, in nearby Hatfield, town councillors have already been forced to replace swing seats because it's believed owners of aggressive dogs allow their pets to clamp their teeth into them while being pushed, which in turn strengthens their jaws. Councillor Kim Langley says it's a worrying trend. It's a concern on the behaviour of a dog, on teaching a dog how to misbehave in that circumstances, and also... It's destroying facilities for young people. I know at least one or two incidences so far and I feel like it's going to get worse and worse. Two people have been charged with attempting to smuggle cocaine via Luton Airport using golf clubs. Tony Bain, who's 50 from Thurlow Street in Southwark, and 47-year-old Yvonne Campbell from Scotland Green Road in Enfield were both arrested on Saturday. They attempted to smuggle the drugs with a potential street value of around £160,000. Now MPs have accused the government of making a complete mess of plans to charge five pence for a plastic carrier bag. The Environmental Audit Committee now wants biodegradable and paper bags, as well as small shops to be included in the proposals. The Labour MP, Joan Wally, says the current ones are too complicated. They've got a scheme in Wales which seems to be working really well, and that is a single straightforward scheme where there's a charge on every bag. And... It just seems to us to be a nonsense to start to exclude paper bags, to exclude biodegradable bags. Sport and the time's come. It's the Winter Olympics. They start this morning in Russia with great British athletes competing in figure skating and snowboard slope style, which is apparently making its Olympic debut. So it's a bright spot, but then we'll have some rain later on. Temperatures at 9 degrees Celsius. Get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Morning, this is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. What a busy morning we've got. I say busy, I'm just trying to find out what we've got. Hang on, bear with me. 
with me. There she blows. The former head teacher of a Buckinghamshire school is set to be sentenced today for historic sex offences against boys in his care during the 1950s and the 1960s. Well, we'll be looking into the changes that have been made to safeguard children since that time. A Welland woman is calling for all dogs to be kept on the lead in public after her rescue dog was attacked. Come on, you know it makes sense. And also, big star, big stars on the show today. Tony Mortimer from E17, Andy Day from CBBS. Oh, I hope Mr Day is ready for one of the toughest interviews of his life. Because this morning, Andy Day from CBBS will be facing some of the most ridiculously tough questions he's ever had in his life. Ever had in his life. Facebook.com forward slash BBC 3CR. You can send me a text, 81333. Start your text, 3CR. Or you can give me a call, 08459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC now, Three Counties Radio. Talk about tough questions. This is, this is a, a, an example of one of the questions that Andy from CBBS will be facing. Andy, do you have any doors in your house and any windows? We'll be finding out later on. He was eating some cucumber then. He wouldn't take it out of his mouth, little monkey. We'll be finding out later on if Andy does have any doors in his house and, indeed, any windows. I, I, he, he said when we wanted to know how many toilets he had in his house, and I thought, no, we're not, we're not going to encourage that sort of behaviour. That's coming up later on in the show. Uh, 08459 455 555. On the subject of uh, uh, dogs, should they be on leads? Uh, Karen has texted in, uh, it's not a bad thing. There are long roving leads, but at least you have overall control. Oh, dear. My six-month-old kitten was killed by four dogs being walked off the lead some years back. In Wellingarden City, police couldn't do a thing. I was worried for a child's safety. 08459 455 555 is the telephone number if you want to give me a call. Now, the former head teacher of a school in Buckinghamshire will be sentenced today for historic sex offences against children. Roland Peter Wright was among a group of teachers who committed the offences at Caldicott School in the 50s and the 60s. Um, another uh, teacher who committed the offences was Hugh Henry, who was found dead on a railway line in Amersham two days ago. I'm joined now by Peter Saunders from NAPAC, the National Association for People Abused in Childhood. Morning, Peter. Good morning, Ian. This is uh, a very high-profile case, not, not uh, least because uh, it, it, slightly disconnected, but Nick Clegg also went to this school at some point. I, I guess this sends out an important message, doesn't it? It, it most certainly does, and I think it was... Very appropriate, listening to the voice of that little chap you referred to as the little monkey earlier. Yes, my little boy, yes. Which is exactly how childhood should be, yep. you know. It's fun, laughter, love, nurturing, and the best possible start, because the rest of the life is going to be a challenge. When children are abused, they have to live with the consequences for the rest of their life. And I think today's sentencing, which I hope is entirely appropriate given the nature of the, the crimes and the many years that they took place over, I hope the, the sentence is appropriate. And I think you're right. I think it must send out a clear signal to society and to everybody in society, do not mess with our children. It's taken years mm. for this uh, case to come to light and then for it all to be... For, for everything to happen, it's taken a very long time, hasn't it? It's taken a horrendous long time and all credit for this has to go to a man called Tom Perry and one or two others who have battled for years to obtain some kind of justice and to bring this issue in, in, into, the, into the forefront of, of the public consciousness. I mean, we have got to introduce mandatory reporting for abuse in institutions where our children are looked after. So many of us, and, and, you know, and I'm one of them, had, the, had we had that in place a long, long time ago, thousands fewer children would have been abused today, Ian. And we've got... God knows why the government are not introducing this. Tom Perry, I hope you're going to speak to him later. I'm Tom sure. Perry's coming on the show in about an hour's time, yeah. Uh, uh, well, he's far more articulate than, than, than I am, and I think he will be able to explain very well just why this has taken so long to, to, to come to court. So for it to be mandatory, it would be, for example, if yeah. I worked in a school yeah. and, uh, and I suspected that the headmaster or, or the geography teacher or whoever was up to no good, it, it, I, legally I would be obliged to go to the police or report it to some authority. 
Absolutely. And that's not the case at the moment. It's not the case, and most people can't even believe that that's not the case at the moment. And even teachers who I know, and I know quite a few, are appalled that this is not a legal requirement, because obviously most would do that, but in this country, people who... uh, you know, report such matters are, 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 whistle, are labelled whistleblowers and they're looked down upon and their careers are affected. And we're not talking about just an, an idle rumour, you know, oh, I suspect something's going on. If, you know, we know the difference, a, a teacher knows the difference between something that is just speculative and something which is clearly wrong. Do they always, they must, Peter? Do they, we've, met, we've talked about this before, I think. Do, do they have. always? Suppose, I mean, supposing I thought, oh, Mr Smith, he's a, he's a little bit dodgy, but I've got I've got no evidence. I've got no facts. I, I, I don't know enough. It would be disastrous for me to report that Mr Smith was a paedophile when Absolutely. maybe he was just a little bit odd. Absolutely. And we're not talking about reporting people who are odd. Right. We're talking about witnessed or known right, okay. child abuse. It is, uh, I mean, e- e- even if it were mandatory, it, the people still feel a reluctance, don't they, to come forward. W- w- why is that? There, I mean, there must be many different reasons for that. It, it, it is complex. I've already mentioned a couple of people feeling threatened and people feeling that, you know, what if they get it wrong, etc., yeah. etc. Cetera, et cetera. But it's actually really about a change, of, a change of culture and the way we treat children generally in, 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 in our society and in many societies around the world where children are still seen as the sort of the chattels of the family, you don't interfere, and if something's going on, more often than not, we actually blame the child. You know, I mean, it, it, there are so many cases where, where, where children, and children historically and still today find it extremely difficult to speak out. And why should mm. they have to speak out? Because it should not be happening to them. But if an adult knows or sus- uh, is strongly suspicious of something going on. And mm. I mean, as I say, not just mere rumour, because we, we can't, as, as my friend Esther Ranson says, rumours can go round the world before the truth gets off the starting block. We're talking about things that are known, and if we don't do something about it, then we have to pay the consequences. And I, I, I can't think of too many people, as I say, apart from the establishment, the government and the big child protection charities, but every survivor organisation I know, and every survivor, and I've been in this world of working with and supporting survivors for 18 years, every single person has said, if only there had been something like mandatory reporting for the abuse that occurred mm. at my school, in my care home, etc., etc., I might not be in the mess I'm in today. Two things that strike me as, um, I mean, I, I, it's disappointing this ever happened, but that strike me disappointing about what's happening at the moment is uh, Mr Henry uh, killed himself, yes. so he won't face justice. Absolutely. Uh, and Mr Wright, if I've got, got this correct, he's going to be appealing. I have no doubt whatsoever. I mean, uh, that, that that must be. I mean, that's that's disappointing that that one has got has got away with it by jumping in front of a train, yeah. and the other one can't put his hands up and say, "I was wrong." Yeah. He's still fighting. He's he's still he's still fighting, and and this is a man who I understand. If, if I could be wrong, but I believe he still lives very close to the premises of the school. It's and an I, area I, I know very very well. I grew up there. I know yeah, I know it very well. And I, and I find I find that, and, and again, this is just <laughs> reflect of the society that we live in that somehow these you know some people listening in most people thank god won't think this but some people will be listening and will be thinking oh he's an old man and or maybe had a bit of a weakness we're talking about child rapists child abusers and as for the man who took his own life um i normally as a christian have every sympathy for a personal tragedy like that but in this case the only person i really feel devastated for is the poor driver of the train Mm. and his family because he's going to live with this and i think what that man did was another act of evil and it was as you said a way of escaping justice and uh, we we hear that again time and time again that child abusers will take the easy way out it it seems to me from cases like this and from from other cases and i I watched uh, a program you mentioned esther ranson i watched programme years ago she was on with a paedophile who was being interviewed it was horrific it was fascinating at the same time yes. um is that they that, 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 that often don't think they've done anything wrong it's not me that's done anything wrong it's the kids that have done something wrong or it's society that's wrong for not recognizing it they, very rarely do the perpetrators of these crimes uh, accept that what they have done is awful well, again, I think you're right in some circumstances and with some abusers, but with others, they know very well what they're right. doing and they know very well that what they're doing is entirely wrong and I would say evil. Mm. And I've been 
you know, I mean, NAPAC, you'd be surprised the calls we get from all sorts of places. And I've recently been talking to a, a paedophile um, because I, I, I figure talking to somebody is, is, is possibly keeping them safe, if you see what I mean. I'm mean, yep. keeping children safe. Yep. So we need to engage with people who are brave enough, let's be honest, to say yes. I, I have an issue, um, and this particular individual that I have been speaking to, um, you know, he recognises the damage that he would do mm. were he to act out what he wants to act out. But he needs some kind of help. And I, I would say that we've got to look at, for, 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 the, for the proportion, that tiny proportion of the population who hold a significant threat to our children, we've got to take that very seriously, and we've got to possibly look at tagging, monitoring people, and, and whatever this man is sentenced to today, I know he'll probably totter into court on his, on, on his walking sticks and, 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 and look decrepit. But, you know, we've got to remember what he was mm. and what he did to so many people. And if he gets, if he gets whatever sentence he receives, and I pray that he is put behind bars where he belongs, um, but when he is released, I think he should be tagged and made to report to the police for the rest of his life because when you destroy the childhood in a of, 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 of a young one, you, you know, you really are committing the worst crime on the planet. And, um, and, and it's about time society got its head around that. And, and we've spoken before, Ian, and mm. I think at long last, thank God, long last, we are starting to address these issues. And, and I know that you will enjoy the benefit of um, lis listening to Tom Perry lately. Um, but, but, but be gentle with him. He's, he's a great guy. But imagine what he's going oh, through. Oh, no, of moment. course. Oh, I, shall, I shall treat him with the respect he deserves. Pete, we, we, we may, maybe we'll speak tomorrow when we found out what the sentence is and uh, we can kind of cast our thoughts on that. You know where I am. Brilliant, Peter. Thank you very much indeed. Peter Saunders uh, from NAPAC, the National Association for people abusing childhood. He's a great speaker. We get him on a lot, and there's a reason for it. He's good. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll speak to Peter tomorrow after the, the sentencing of uh, Roland Peter Wright. It'll be interesting to get his thoughts. And um, yeah, as you heard there later on, we'll be speaking to one of the victims who has pursued this case relentlessly, Tom Perry from Amersham, a bit later on in the show. It's a quarter past seven. It's BBC 3CR. Let's get the travel with Alice. <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the M25, anti-clockwise, we've got reports a lane is blocked between Junction 25 for Enfield and 24 for Potter's Bar because a lorry is broken down. The M1 southbound slow going between 10 for Luton Airport and 7 for Hemel Hempstead. On public transport, on Chiltern Railways, all lines to and from Marlebone are currently blocked because of a signalling problem. This might cause delays of around 40 minutes, but tickets are being accepted on Virgin trains. On the Northern Line, trains are running on the Edgware, High Barnet and Mill Hill East branches. The line should be fully operational as soon as possible, although some stations will still be closed. I'm Alice Gloss at BBC Three Counties Radio. Alice, thank you very much. Right, 7.16. It's Thursday the 6th of February. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A former head teacher will be sentenced today after he was found guilty of historic sex offences against children at a Buckinghamshire school. A Hertfordshire woman whose pet was brutally attacked wants the dog licence to be restored. And in sport, Nottingham Forest beat Preston 2-0 to seal an FA Cup fifth round tie against Sheffield United. BBC Three Counties Radio. If you've got a problem with a company, a council or an organisation... Get this roofing company round, see if they can fix the problem and I'll pay the bill. He said, yeah, I did say that. The JVS show fights for your rights. This conversation went round and round and round. And tackles your consumer problems. So, Roy, the question is, has he paid the bill? Yes, and he was standing there and he handed me an envelope. So I just opened the envelope and I looked inside of it. There's a cheque for £120 and that's it. If you need our help, email JVS show at bbc.co.uk Are you happy? Yes, I'm quite happy. I will give him my fanfare, my horn and any other problems, Roy, you know where I am. The JVS Show, weekdays from nine. BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio.
Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five is the telephone number if you want to give us a call on the subject of dogs being uh, on the lead. Dogs on the lead. Come on, guys, it makes sense. I'm not saying all the time. We will have to find a compromise. We'll have to find a park that is just for dogs. We'll find a space that's just for dogs. But when you're walking about in the street, when you're near the playground, when you're in, in parks where there are kids, you've got to put your dog on the lead. I don't care if it's a massive rotty or a tiny little Yorkie. You've got to put it on a lead. Rob says on Facebook, I think all dogs, regardless of how well trained they are, should be on leads in public. Boom, you're right. Gary says, put your dog on a lead at all times in a public place or be fined. Sounds good to me. And ban all horses from public roads too. What? Ashley says, "Uh, no, I've got a year-old bulldog and he's so good, I keep him off the lead as much as I can. And give him as much freedom all about training. The worst dog are those little yuppie ones, little dog syndrome. He just wants to play and live as he should. Oh, Ashley. Oh, Ashley, you're so selfish and indeed so wrong. The reason we're talking about this is because a Hertfordshire woman uh, is calling for a change in the law to force all dog owners to keep their animals on the lead in public. Susan Smith from Welling Garden City also wants the District Council to bring back dog wardens after her King Charles Spaniel was attacked and was left needing stitches. Meanwhile, Hatfield Town Council's had to replace playground equipment because some dog owners are using the swings to strengthen their dog's jaws. Well, in a moment, we'll hear from uh, Hatfield Town Councillor Kim Langley, but first of all, let's talk to Susan Smith. Morning, Susan. Good morning. Uh, what happened to you? What, what, what is your dog, Buddy? What, what brand is it and what happened? He's uh, King Charles uh, Spaniel. OK, he's beautiful little dog. Field. Yep. Yeah, he's, he is a small dog. And what happened? I was walking along um, a pedestrian uh, a, you know, road um, with him on the lead, under control, as he should be, and I walked past the driveway... And the dog leapt out on on the driveway and just mauled him. It wasn't just a dog snapping, it was a full-on attack. And it's obviously left him needing veterinary treatment and us both really shaken up. And, and yeah, he's a nervous dog anyway. Um, we haven't had him that long, had him two months. So I'm having to go to, back to basics with him, mm. trying to get him to trust, etc. But I'm, it, it's not, it, that's happened and it's absolutely dreadful. There has been lots of attacks in this area recently by, um, you know, by dogs, either on dog on dog or people being bitten. And I found all this out by people coming up to me now because, you know, obviously I've been on the front of the paper. My own veterinary practice has said the amount of bites and attacks are, are getting worse. So I do feel that we should have the same laws that are in Northern Ireland. They're much more stringent than ours. Dogs have to be on leads and collars and under control in public zones. And there's plenty of other open spaces if people want to go and let their dogs off to go. But in certain places, I think that dogs, and certainly on, on the pavements, dogs should be under full control. Susan, we got an email from uh, uh, another Ian. Uh, my dog needs a run off his lead every day or he would get fat. And dogs do need exercise. They do need to run free, don't they? I absolutely agree. Listen, I'm not bashing. The majority of people with dogs are fine, but there are an awful lot out of there, people out there that don't have their dogs under control. But I appreciate he thinks his dog's 100% safe. I would disagree with that. I don't think any dog is 100% predictable. And they are animals, they're not humans, and I think sometimes people's over... They, they love their dogs, we all love our dogs, but they are animals, they're not humans, and we've got to stop making... A, not thinking that these dogs think like us. They don't have the same rationale as us. They don't think like us. And their instincts will come into force. And, and that's what I would say to him. There's plenty of other open spaces. So where, where, where would you suggest then, Susan? That, 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 so you, you want dogs to wear leads where? On the pavement? On the pavement, uh, as, they, um, as they're made to do in Northern Ireland. Definitely on the pavement. Yep. Um, some public parks, not all of them, but some should be dog-free completely. And that's up to Welling Garden and, and Hatfield to put in bylaws. I've asked them to do this. I haven't l- yet got my uh, petition um, online yet, but I intend to um but they've already written back to me and said bylaws are very hard um oh. to enforce um I, I, 
because this is another problem because they've got street wardens, not dog wardens. And they're telling me they've got more of these street wardens than they, that they had before, but they haven't. They've got five spread right over the borough. And these people have to deal with graffiti and other things. Well, Susan, stay there. Let's, let's put these... We're joined by uh, Hatfield Town Councillor Kim Langley. Kim, morning. Good morning. Well, you're, you're listening to... I'm, I'm fine, thank you. You're listening to what Susan has to say. What, what is, what's your response? Well, first of all, Susan, I'm a dog owner myself. I've got two dogs. Um, and, yes, I've experienced the same thing that you've experienced. Um, and with my borough council hat, um, the street wardens, I really know, well, I talk to them an awful lot, and they do what they need to do, and they do collect an awful lot of stray dogs. Um, and I'm actually proud of the work that they're doing. Um, it is a positive note. It's a fact that we're not calling them dog wardens, we're calling them street wardens. Yes, they deal with other issues, but they are very fully trained of dealing with stray dogs. So that's a very good positive thing that's come out of... Is it true, or is this, is this an urban myth, Kim? They can only take dogs that are tied up? They can only take dogs that are tied up oh. because um, you've got a dog running around. Yeah. Now, this is where the town council, and this is my town council hat on, um, Carrie Lloyd, our clerk, is working extremely hard um, to get things running smoothly in respect to what is classified as a dangerous dog um, where it goes down to the street wardens, where it should go to the police and going from there. So things are moving in a forward direction. What about dogs on leads, Kim? This is what Susan wants. Dogs on leads. I, I agree. But how do you implement that law? That law um should come, I think, from um, Parliament, because what we're having in Hatfield, in the borough, is not unique. It's happening nationwide. So I, I think that the strengthening of the law would be a more... Needs to be a national. Susan, I'm going to come back to you in a second. I just want to quickly, Kim, while I've got you on, can you, you tell us what's happening with these swings, with the dogs are strengthening their teeth on them or something? Well, I... Uh, I live in Hatfield. Um, I've heard rumours about what the swings are being used for. They are rumours. Um, I am very concerned. The town council is very concerned. Um, we're replacing them as soon as anybody reports them to us. So how often um, are you having to replace them? That can't be cheap. Um, it's not as much as, um, as, as disastrous as we believe it is. Um, but basically, yes, we're wasting a lot of um, taxpayers' money on replacing swings where we would rather like to improve our facilities. Kim, I've got to end it there just because I want to squeeze in Justin in a second. Susan, going back to what Kim was saying about leads and, and, and laws and things like that, what's your response? Yeah, I, I agree with her. I still don't have the same feelings of her with the, with the street wardens. I've never seen one, and I'd like to see more of them patrolling um, the parks, etc. I've never, ever seen one. But, yes, I have um, written to Grant Shapps, our local MP, and um, I've also um, been speaking to... to um, the, the select committee who are trying to bring in a, a new amendment to the dogs law the dangerous dogs act so i do appreciate some of what she said i don't agree with all of it but i'm quite welcome a meeting with her and also i have asked for a meeting with the head of the environmental right. services and he's not responded hang on one second kim can, can if we put you two together can you have, a, have you got time for a meeting with susan I would love to meet you, Susan. Fantastic. Right, that's that sorted. Sorry to rush you. I've got so much to squeeze in. Stay on the line, Susan and Kim. Uh, Catherine, if you can swap their details. Kim has very kindly agreed to have a meeting with Susan, which is great. I'm just rushing, so I want to squeeze Justin in. Morning, Justin. Morning, boss. You've been out and about, haven't you, talking to people about dogs on leads? I would imagine I would imagine that most people think it's a sensible idea. Well, you would think so. Um, coming up, um, you're, you're about to hear the opposite, actually. Um, I have been talking to dog owners this morning, asking them whether dogs should be on leads at all times in public places here's what people had to say not if they can be controlled no why should they it's free to run around and again you're confident that you can control your dog well did you not see our dogs come back when we whistled when you pulled up so that's control isn't it yes most definitely most definitely for safety's sake yes most definitely well, tell us what you've seen when you've been taking your dogs uh, out i saw a dog a child wanted to play with the dog and the dog bit her I mean, the child didn't know any different, but the owner wasn't responsible. 
Oh, they should have had a muzzle on it. And what about other people in your family? Do they also keep their dogs on leads at all oh, times when they're out? Most definitely, yes, they always kept on a lead. Yes, most definitely. They're responsible owners. Responsible owners will keep their dogs on leads. Morning, madam. Ian wants to know, should all dogs be kept on leads at all times in public places? No. They've got the right to roam free, the same as that Burk has. Um, so what right has he got to say that all dogs should be on leads? But he's saying that you're selfish if you let your dog off a lead because your dog could be a danger to the public. If we were out on the roads, yes. But in a park where there's no cars, no nothing, no. But there's, there's people no though, isn't there? Yeah, well, if you leave the dog alone, the dog will leave you alone. How many times have you been in a park and a dog has come up to you? Oh, sorry, I'll be part honest with you all the time. Does that not scare you? No. But then again, a dog coming up to you or anybody else, for whatever reason, they may take a dislike to you and they could attack you. Surely you can see that. No. A dog will not attack you unless it is provoked. Seriously? Honestly, God's honest truth. There has got to be a reason. The same as there's got to be a reason for you to take it out on somebody. Are you living in a fantasy world with that attitude, saying that a dog won't attack unless provoked? Come on. No, I don't think so. Yeah, yes, I do. What? Was that you mm. doing a voice at the end, Justin? Uh, what sort of voice? That, that, were you pretending to be an old lady then? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, Is she yeah, for real? Yeah. Aisha called me a Burke. Well, yeah, like, yeah. you should have a point there. But d- d- a dog will only attack you if you provoke it. Absolutely staggering views. You know, as, as I put to that lady there at the yeah. end, are you living in a fantasy world? Um, she doesn't believe so. She wow. clearly sees the good in people and the good in animals. At the end of the day, we get this every single time time in people saying to me my dog he's absolutely lovely yeah. look at him he wouldn't hurt anybody well i'm sorry but you just don't know do you justin thank you very much i'm shocked by that last uh, i'm shocked by quite a lot of those points there come on dogs should be on leads not all the time we'll have a couple of special parks where they can play some fenced off areas where they can run around wild but on the street near the kiddies play area the dog has to be on a lead <laughs> Travel news for beds, hearts and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. We had a call from Adrian on the M25 anti-clockwise. A lane is blocked between 25 for Enfield and Junction 24 for Potter's Bar because a lorry's broken down. The M1 southbound very slow going between Junction 10 for Luton Airport and 9 for Redbourne. On the speed sensors, the A40 London bound really struggling today. Queues between Ickenham and Wembley at the moment. On public transport, Chiltern Railways has all lines to and from Marlebone blocked at the moment because of a signalling problem. Tickets are being accepted by Virgin Trains, though. On the Northern Line, trains are running now, although some stations remain closed. This is Alice Gloss at BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Morning with the headlines, I'm Serena Farrow. A former head teacher will be sentenced today after he was found guilty of historic sex offences against children at a Buckinghamshire school. Elsewhere, a Hertfordshire woman, as we've just been hearing, whose pet was brutally attacked, wants the dog licence to be restored. Elsewhere, the security authorities in America say terrorists may try to smuggle explosives in tubes of toothpaste on planes flying to Russia. A US official says they may be used to put together a bomb on a flight or up an arriving at the Winter Olympics. And people in Kempston are worried their fire station may become part-time. Beds and Hearts Fire Service is looking to save money but say nothing's been set in stone as yet. Then the news, then headlines. Let's move to the morning sport. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Nottingham Forest beat Preston 2-0 to seal an FA Cup fifth round tie against Sheffield United last night. Forest manager is Billy Davies. Well, we have played lots of games this season where we've dominated so many games and not come away with the points that we should have won. Tonight it was the opposite. Tonight we didn't play well. Tonight we didn't pass the ball well. Tonight we didn't compete well enough and quite simple. The home team deserved to win the match. The home team were better than what we were and uh, a lot of credit to the home team for doing what they're doing. Cricket now and the former England captain Michael Vaughan says the ECB must do all they can to ensure Gary Kirsten succeeds Andy Flower as England coach. Vaughan also doesn't hold out much hope for the success of England at the T20 World Cup either. You've got to remember, they say they're moving for the future. We've got a World Cup in five weeks. A World yeah. Cup that England have won only two times ago. I don't, think England, I don't think England have got any chance. 
Staying on the subject of England, this time rugby though, they'll announce their team for the Six Nations match against Scotland this morning. Tennis now and singles wins for Heather Watson and Joe Conter helped Great Britain to a 2-1 win over Latvia. That was in their opening Fed Cup group match in Budapest. And finally, the 2014 Winter Olympics start in Russia this morning with great British athletes competing in figure staking and snowboard slope style, which is making its Olympic debut. BBC Three Counties Radio, more from me at eight. Serena Marrow. Yeah. No, one of our listeners, Scott, um, about a year ago, made um, vegetable names out of all of the members of the team. The um, only one oh, I was Ian Leek. Uh, the only other one I can remember genius. was yeah. The only other one I can remember was Sophie Celeriac. Yep. I can't remember any of the others, but he's just he's just tweeted me Serena Marrow. There's another one. He's picking up a conversation from a year ago. Dearie me, he's got nothing better to do. No. I'll no. give him something to do. Oh dear. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. 08459 oh, four double five five double five is the telephone number. You can text as well. I prefer phone calls, guys, but we'll do texts. A request to parents, says Sharon on the text, please, when my dogs are on leads, just say, can we stroke your dog instead of letting your kids just charge up to them and hug them? Oh, no, I would never allow my children to do that. My children will respectfully go and look at the dog, but stand a distance away. um, And we will wait to be invited to touch the dog. Sharon continues, I'm more than happy for them to be stroked because they like to be fussed, but they can be startled when children take them by surprise. It's great when kids like dogs and they can be a right pain when they don't. Uh, Yander in Sundon says, of course all dogs should be on a lead. I would never have my pugs off a lead out of the house. Pugs. It's a no-brainer. Pugs are lovely natured, but I would never trust them by a road, for example, and you never know what a dog will do, no matter how gentle they may seem. I never understand the objection to using a lead. Ladies and gentlemen, common sense has spoken. No, I don't... Catherine, what are you like with your... Oh, you're on the phone. I, I, I will let my... My boys are fascinated by dogs. Of course they are. And if we see a dog um, that's sat and has got a lead on, uh, we'll walk up to it and I'll hold their hands and they'll have a little look, but they'll stand a couple of feet away. And they won't, they won't touch that dog unless uh, the owner is invited to. I was wondering what you're like with your girls around dogs. I just say you don't know that dog. That yeah. dog doesn't know you, so you would I take the boys up to have a look. If it's sat down and it's got a lead, and we, but we stand a couple of feet away... And if the owner does the face yeah, yeah. of, oh, look, you know, let them have a little... Yeah. Then you kind of read the body language, don't yeah, you? Yeah, well, I, I wait for them to say, or if yeah. they want to stroke him, they can. Yeah. And that's what we wait for. My mum once told me never to look in a dog's eyes because it would get you. Yeah, no, don't look in a dog's that's eyes. That's starting, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's, that's fighting talk. me forever. Uh, you have to do that thing. What's that thing um, where you make, like, a horn out of your fingers? <laughs> Crocodile Dundee. Is that...? I think that only works with bullocks. How rude. Uh, Ian's in Luton. Morning, Ian. Morning, Ian. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Oh, you're the gentleman that emailed in. Yes. you got to keep That's your me. dog on a lead, Ian. Well, I do on the streets, but when he gets to the big park, he's got to get off the lead, because otherwise he'll get fat. He needs to, he needs to run with other dogs. But so okay, this, and this is the thing we need. We need to find areas where dogs can run off the lead. But on the pavement, you'd agree, keep your dog on the yeah. lead. Oh, absolutely. He's got two leads because he's really strong. So yeah. Yeah. Blimey, what kind of dog is it? A lion dog? It, no, it's a Doberman. Oh, flipping heck. Two leads! Yeah, well, he's got, he's, got, well, he's got a, a strong lead, and then he's got another lead, and it goes over his nose and his okay. um, mouth, so he can't bite. OK, so he's got, he's got a, a, a muzzle on as well? No, it's not a muzzle, no. It's just like a lead uh, oh. over, over his nose. But, yeah. but, but can, well, can he bite? Um, yeah, I'm sure he can. Oh, but he never, he's never bitten anyone. Well, probably. Ian, so hang on a minute. You're letting this wild animal run around a park <laughs> where yeah. he can bite people? Yeah. That's insane, and dare I say it, selfish. No, it's not. He wouldn't, he wouldn't bite anyone. He's never bitten anyone. Uh, uh, like oh, saying, hang on a minute. I'm, that's, I'm, like, I'm, that's like saying... Um, you know, any animal. Oh, you've got that pet hamster. Oh, and you let it out of the cage. Well, yeah, but he could bite you. you know, yeah, hamster. but a pet hamster, we've got a rabbit and a cat. The, the rabbit isn't going to rip a child's face off, is he? No, well, no, 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 it's a Doberman, to be honest. But you don't, no. but Ian, this is the thing, this is the thing that always boils down to. You don't know that. Dogs are wild animals. And it, it, if someone treads on them, if someone scares them, if they go... Something could happen to trigger your lovely... Do- What's your dog called? Toby. To- Toby? 
Oh, flipping it. Something could happen to, to, to set Toby off. Yeah, but he's never done it. He's nearly two now. He's been well trained. He's gone to dog training classes. Never shown any temperament. He's a lovely dog. And he gets on with kids and gets on with adults himself. But, you know, it's, it's the part of each other. You shouldn't be having a go at people like me that train our dogs and, 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 and look after them. Oh, no. You should be having a go at people the chaps, the ones that JBS has a go at, the ones that take their, their pit bulls or their staffies down uh, Luton High Street with no lead on. It's that, you know, irresponsible dog owners are the ones who should be having a pop back, not people like me. Ian, stay on the line. Ian, stay on the line. Uh, Trevor's in Ellsbury. Morning, Trevor. Morning, Ian. What do you reckon to what Ian was just saying? Well, I mean, I keep my dog in here all the time unless I'm over the fields. But um, he's been nipped a few times off other dogs. Yeah. And the owner said, oh, yeah, he doesn't like dogs. So, well, one, why is it off the lead? And two, if you know it bites other dogs, why hasn't he got a mother on? Because it could have been a child. You know, it, you get, I meet a lot of owners. Um, most, most of the dogs... Are, are really well behaved and all off the leads over the field, but there's always there's a couple over there that dogs will bite other dogs. And so, oh, and they're, they're, they're always the small ones, aren't they, Trevor? They're always the small yeah. ones, the little Jack Russells and things. Well, the ones that went for mine when he was a, when he was first being walked, they were all um, they were all small dogs. They were all little terriers, but um, yeah. he's, been, he's, had couple, he's had a couple of big dogs go for him as well. And um, oh. and you get the owner says, oh, he's never done that before. Well, that's because it's a wild animal. It will do what it wants to do. So it doesn't matter how well you train it, it will turn. Because we've had it before, when the dog snapped. And the owner said, no, it's never done that before. It just goes to prove it's a wild animal. It will do what it wants to do. My dog wouldn't turn, I'll tell you that But, is it, but Ian, you yeah, don't you know that, that, do you? I can't you can't say, say that. that. I, can say that with, I can say that with complete confidence. My dog wouldn't turn. Yeah, but well, I've had the same where, where a dog turns and the owner says he's never done that before. Well, that dog has turned. It's never done it before, but it has done it. It's done it now. So we could, we, this, is, this is an argument that's gone forever because it's one that, you know, anything could turn, a rabbit could turn, um, a child could turn, you know, um, just, just don't pick on poor dogs that... Um, with responsible owners, because it's the irresponsible owners. When you have a, do- a, a dog kill a child, it's always um, a, a child dog, something like that. It's, a, it's somebody that's got an irresponsible owner that doesn't look after it, probably doesn't walk it. it. You shouldn't be having a pop at the, the, the responsible dog owners all the time. All right, chaps, yeah. listen, thank you very much indeed. Ian and Luton, Trevor in Aylesbury, 08459 455 555 is the telephone number. Your thoughts on that? I'm not having a go at the responsible dog owners. I don't think, Ian, obviously you feel that I am. I don't think I am. I'm just saying, and you do sound very responsible. I'm just saying, actually, maybe be a little bit more responsible, really. And and it, it does wind me up. That's too strong. Uh, it interests me. Oh, Helen and Milton Keynes, put your phone down. We're trying to call you. Put your phone down. It does interest me uh, that dog owners always say, oh, no, my dog would never... Uh, no, 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 my dog would never attack. He's, he's a lovely personality. He'd never attack. But those dogs, chav dogs, as uh, Ian was calling them there, those dogs who have attacked people and who have attacked dogs, I bet their owners before that would have said exactly the same thing. 08459 four double five five double five. Oh, look, regular texter is now becoming a regular caller. Morning, Helen. Hello. It's nice to hear you again. Thank you. How are you? Now, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Dogs uh, on leads, what do you reckon? I think they should be kept on leads. I've got two. I've got a dog that, um, it was, I've had it 16 years. He's a really old dog. And um, I've got a little Wessex one, but they're both kept on leads. But my more thing that annoys me is I take my dogs for a walk and that. But with dogs, you have do have a lot of responsibilities. When my son was nine years old, he, and that both my sons wanted to join the, in the forces. I told you I've got one of the sons that's in there, but the other one couldn't join. And the reason he couldn't join was because his grandmother, when she was alive, took him to the park, and he fell over. He had a cut on his arm, yeah. but he fell in some dog's mess. Oh, no. He was in hospital in intensive care for five days. Oh, he has to now wear glasses. He has to shakes all the time, and it ruined his life because he cannot go in the air force. So what? So what? The, the, he, he has to because I've heard this, and I wasn't sure if this was true or not. Yes, that the dogs poo can... his skin all joined together. Everything. He looked like 
a fish man, he really did, and I've got all the paperwork and everything to go with it. And he has to carry a card and everything. He looked like a fish man? Yeah, his fingers, skin came in between. Oh, my... His fingers and goodness. his toes. And he was in intensive care, we really thought. And all it was, because he landed in a children's play area where the swings and that were, you know. Yeah. And he fell over and he landed in dog's mess. Somebody let their dog go in the children's play area. And where I walk my dogs in Milton Keynes, they don't... It is a park and it is where children play football and everything... I've seen pet people let their dogs mess and they just walk off. I've even said to some of them, you want to pick it up, and they've turned around and said, you want it picked up, pick it up yourself. Oh, no. Well, I tell you, last week, Catherine and I saw um, a, a lady who, well, was overzealous in that her big dog, it was like a husky or something, St Bernard's or something, uh, was doing a whoopsie, and she crouched behind its bottom and caught it with a plastic bag. Caught it! Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even let it touch the floor. Well, but after hearing that story about your son turning into something that looked like a fish, man... Yeah, I've, I've got uh, somewhere in this house... I've moved house. I've got photographs of him like oh, it. It was dear. even in the local paper oh, when he was young as well. Poor lad. Yeah, That's he awful. He was in intensive care for five days. We really thought we were going to lose him. Oh, well. And he wanted to join the forces like his brother. And it's the one thing that stopped him because he had to have he's on medic. He has to have um, a special medication still. Oh, and he dear. gets the shakes. And he has to wear glasses where he never had to wear glasses before. Oh, Helen, that's awful. Thank you so much for sharing that story. I mean, dog poo is, is a slightly different thing that we have done before and we will do again. But when you hear a story like that, you've got to be... Res- I guess the key there, the key point Helen was making is responsibility. You have to be responsible. Now, we spoke to Ian earlier on, who is a responsible dog owner, at least in his opinion. But I do think... Dogs take a lot of work, and dogs are dangerous, even the tiny ones. They are dangerous, and you've got to be responsible. If you've got a dog, only in a certain few places should it be off its lead. On the pavement, uh, near children's play areas, in various places, it should be on a lead. 08459 four double five five double five. Phoenix has tweeted, his tongue slightly in his cheek, I think. Uh, I've trained my sons to safely use their air rifle at the park. They won't turn. They're very gentle. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the A1M southbound, a lane is closed between Junction 4 for Hartford and 3 for St Albans, but there are no delays on the sensors at the moment. M1 southbound looking very slow, though, between 10 for Luton Airport and 9 for Redbourne. The M25 anti-clockwise is queuing between Junction 21 for the M1 and 16 for the M40. And on public transport, Chiltern Railways has delays of up to 40 minutes after an earlier signalling problem. The Metropolitan Line has trains every 10 minutes running between Harrow on the Hill and Aldgate. And on First Capital Connect, normal service has now resumed between Finsbury Park and Moorgate. This is Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much, Alice. 7.46, it's uh, Thursday the 6th of February, I'm Ian Lee, these are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A charity for abused children says some teachers should be tagged and monitored after a former head teacher was found guilty of historic sex offences at a Buckinghamshire school. The security authorities say terrorists may try to smuggle explosives in tubes of toothpaste on planes flying to the Wim- Winter Olympics. Ouch. And in sport, Nottingham Forest beat Preston 2-0 to seal an FA Cup fifth round tie against Sheffield United. Let's get the weather now. Here's Elizabeth. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Good morning. Today's going to turn into another rather wet day, I'm afraid, uh, but the winds won't be quite so much of an issue this morning, um, not into the afternoon either, but the rain will. Now, it will be a dry early start, dry through the rest of this morning's rush hour across beds, hearts and bucks, starting off the day on around six degrees, so not too chilly either, perhaps a little bit of early brightness before the rain spreads in through the middle part of the morning into the early part of the afternoon, most of it quite light. It will only turn heavy a bit later on into the afternoon and... 
handily enough for the evening rush hour. Now, in terms of warnings, we do have a yellow warning out, uh, mostly for southern areas of the three counties, uh, to cover the possibility of probably around, well, just under an inch's worth of rain. So, of course, already falling on saturated ground. It's not particularly good news, I'm afraid. That warning valid not only for today, but also into Friday and Saturday as well. So, turning wet, certainly by the afternoon, wet everywhere. Top temperatures today of up to 7 or 8 degrees Celsius. Not feeling all that nice underneath the rain, but at least we've lost the strong gusts of wind that we saw yesterday. The rain continuing through the evening turned really quite heavy at times through the overnight period. Into tomorrow morning it will turn a bit more showery. Temperatures down to around 6 or 7 degrees. So some showers around for tomorrow morning's rush hour but a drier day. Some spells of brightness, some spells of sunshine into the afternoon. Still quite blustery tomorrow though um, and stormy again on Saturday. That's the forecast Ian. Roberto Peroni. We'll talk about your partner's annoying habits this after a woman filed for divorce after just one week. I, I know I, I snore and I snore badly, but I can't help it. Roberto Peroni. It's Friday. Why am I even bothering to go to work today? You've got to. You never know when a doughboard suddenly appears in front of you and you've got to dive in. You need a lot of love, a bit of patience to keep a relationship going. Sometimes you have to turn a blind eye. Roberto Peroni. Weekdays from three on BBC Three Counties Radio. Uh, Ian, I used to be a courier driver, says Sean in Luton on the text, delivered to a house one day and this dog came bounding down the hallway and bit my leg. So it's not just dogs on footpaths that should be on a lead. Imagine if that was a kid knocking at the door. The owner had a go at me as though I provoked it. Well, they do, don't they? Ian, we have too many irresponsible dog owners out there. The ones who let their dogs off the lead are generally the owners that let their dogs foul our streets. One owner on Parkside lets her two dogs out on a nearby grass area to do their business so that her garden is clean. This is 1978. That's what used to happen in the... Do you remember in the 70s, dogs used to take themselves for walks? Do you remember that? People would let their dogs out and they'd take... I think you mentioned this to me the other day, Catherine. Yeah, they did. They'd, let, they'd open the door, let their dogs out all afternoon and then they'd come back home. Sometimes they carried their own leads in their mouths. They did, didn't they? But I just remember dogs roaming and you knew whose dog it was. The 70s were weird like that. Why no, no, uh, other dogs are intimidating off of the lead. Enough is enough. My dog is always on the lead and that is real control, says Pat. Howard's uh, on the way to Milton Keynes. Morning, Howard. Good morning, big fella. What would you like to say, boss? Dogs. Yep. Right, I have a husky. Now, everyone comments on how gorgeous she looks. Yeah. I never let her off the lead until we get to an open space, like a, a big field, you know, where it's in the countryside. Um, but generally, I, 99% of the time, I would trust her. There's that 1% that I wouldn't trust her. Yeah. Now, I get a bit annoyed when people just let their dogs off, willy nilly, you know, oh, you know, can't do their business here, there and everywhere. Just walk off as if they pretend to never see the dog doing the whoopsies. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I didn't... The people look away when their dog is doing yeah, it, so they've yeah. not noticed oh, yeah. it. Definitely. Yeah, I get, I get well, well wound up by that. And I think, well, you know, it's not the dog's fault, it's the owner's fault. You know, it's... Oh, it just winds me up, mate, I tell you. Dogs on leads, though. Do you reckon they should be on leads most of the time? I'm not saying all the time. Of course dogs need to run off, but well, we need to find special places where they can do it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, there should be dog areas like they're doing the space. Yeah. They're doing the space there, actual dog areas. Howard, I'm going to let you go. The line's not great, but thank you. Uh, an email here from Anthony. I'll read it, even though it's... Well, y- you make your mind up. I am a responsible dog owner. My dog stays on the lead when walking in the street, and then I would let her off the lead for a run in the park. I pick up the mess that she does and then put the mess in the bin. Not many people pick up the dog poo that their dogs do. Ian, can you bite? Are you under control? My dog is the same. I have her under control. I am a responsible dog owner. People can turn the same as dogs. It's how you keep control that is what counts. Then he goes on to say, Disappointed this morning with what I saw. A car has overtook a hearse in Oakley Road, Luton. There was a coffin in the car with flowers bearing a name. I won't say the name. People are worse than animals. What? Sorry? Is it... I, I think... I think you're allowed to overtake a hearse, aren't you? I think as long as, long as you do it respectfully. I mean, I, I always say, if I'm wearing a hat, I haven't worn a hat for ages, actually. I always take my hat off when a hearse passes. I always turn the music off in my car as well. I think you're kind of allowed to overtake a hearse. I don't know. Oh, wait, four five nine four double five five double five. Julia's in Stevenage. Good morning, Julia. Good morning. Dogs, go on. Well, I have a border collie. He's 13 years old. And 
you know, hand on my heart, truthfully, he has never manured outside my back garden. Don't know I what have taught him yes. to do it in the back garden. I pick it up, and it's no trouble to anybody but myself. He's never manured... No. In the park? No. He's never done a whoopsie on the pavement? No. He's never done a poo-poo outside a shop? No. And when he wets, you know how dogs kind of do a little trickle to say they've been there? Yes, they do, That's yes. That's all, all she does. Really? Her, she Good for wets you. in the garden over a soak away most of the time. A so- what's a soak away? Well, I have a flag garden because I got a bitch and I didn't want my grass messed up. No, you wouldn't, would you? And it's only it's a very small garden. Yeah, so it's a little she, and well, at she does the a wee end wee of over the garden. The, yeah. There's a soak away where the 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 flagstones are slightly uh-huh. declined, and when you get water on them, they go down into. How the did you train her to do a whoopsie and a, or do a wee wee in the soak away? Well, I I used to take her over there. Ah. The, the the whoopsie, um, I know I don't go out to work, so I used to get out at about 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning, and until she'd opened her bowels kind oh. of thing, I didn't take her out. No. So she got used to the fact, I Good think, that she didn't go for a walk. Good for you. I mean, dogs are quite intelligent, really. Yeah. Well, Juliet, listen, I appreciate that call. Thank you very much indeed. Gosh, there's a, a, a story, isn't it? Now, uh, <laughs> Phil, I bet you didn't think you'd be following a story like that, did you? Uh, no, not quite. Not- Although the, the, the soak away connotation is quite interesting because actually that's what they reckon caused our hole. Oh, well, well, listen, for those who don't remember, how could you have ignored this story? This is uh, Phil Comran who um, had a massive hole turn up in his driveway and your uh, stepdaughter, Zoe's uh, Volkswagen Lupo, disappeared down the hole, didn't you, in Walter's Ash. It, it disappeared about 30 feet down. So what do they think caused it? Well, uh, there's, uh, the, the dam pipes from the, the gutters have got two soakaways that uh, sort of basically converge in the same place. Uh, and obviously this goes back to when the house was built at the end of the 50s. And it seems that all the rain we've been having has just sort of been the final straw. But over the years, the water's been coming down from the gutter and uh, going through the soakaway, mm. and that's just been destabilising the ground. Blimey, OK. So they've, they've kind of worked out what, what caused it. Do, do you know how they're going to resolve it, what they're going to do? I'm sitting in front of the house now and there's a, a concrete lorry here uh, <laughs> that's ready to start pouring stuff in and I think they're going to spend all day pouring, they reckon, about 300 tonnes of concrete oh, in. Oh, blimey, 300 tonnes! It's going to be quite a job, I think. And the car's, the car's staying there... The car's staying there forever. Bruce, yeah. rest in peace. Yeah. Oh, dear, your uh, stepdaughter must be gutted. Absolutely gutted, yeah. And, and do we know what the situation is with the insurance yet, yeah? both the car and the house? Uh, the house, the insurance people have been absolutely brilliant and everything has been uh, is covered, basically. Um, what they've got especially concerned about is quite a lot of the foundations showing now, so this is why they're working so quickly yeah. uh, to make sure that no damage is actually done to the house itself. So houses are brilliant, the car insurance not so brilliant, um, but then we all know about car insurance companies, so yes, t- I won't say any more. They'll take their time. Phil, listen, thank you very much for coming on. Sorry to keep it so brief, we've got so much to cram in this morning, but I'm glad that uh, it looks like that hole's going to be filled in. Uh, now, here's a story that was uh, emailed in. Jack, uh, uh, the Chanda family from Bedford contacted us to say their daughter, who catches the bus to school, was dropped off on Monday at a completely different stop to normal. Um, we've been told that Bedford Borough Council agreed to change the route of the 68 bus from Stuart B to Bedford, and the parents weren't informed. Well, Mina Chanda joins me now. Morning, Mina. Hi there. So you have a 10-year-old daughter. Yes. Well, what happened? Um, well, she usually... Uh, I drop her off to school in the morning, so on the way back she um, catches the bus, and on Monday I got a call from her saying, Mum, the bus has got... Um, the, cha- the route's changed, I don't know where to get off. So obviously I panicked, and then luckily she went home with a friend that day, um, and when I phoned the bus company, they said, oh, yes, the route changed on Thursday or Friday. Oh. So I said, well, what about phoning the school and letting them know? What about, you know, and first of all, who made this decision? So the, the Grant Palmer Bus Company said it was the council that made the decision. So obviously my husband was on the phone to the council saying, 
do you not know that there's a um, to, to actually um, phone the parents and let them know or where's a sort of consultation period you've got 10 11 year olds 9 year olds on this bus and all of a sudden they're dropped off at a completely different stop so I have my, her granddad who usually picks her up on the bus stop so he's worried saying you know what's happened the bus hasn't oh, come so I've got a phone call to left right and centre saying where is the bus where, where, where's you know where's our child so was your, was your little girl um, nervous was she anxious or is she a confident young thing and, and kind of dealt with it. Uh, she phoned me and said, Mum, I'm really worried. What do I do? Do I walk home or do I go home with a friend? Oh, so dear. I said, go home with your friend at the moment and I'll pick you up from there cause, because I didn't want her walking, you know, halfway around Bedford um, on her own. So obviously our, our, our concern is the safety of our child. So I'm sick to death of the bus company always saying the same excuse in hindsight because a year ago the bus broke down, mm. didn't quite get to school and you've got a group of children waiting there and thinking, where's the bus? So I said you should at least phone the school so the school can let the parents know. We did ask the bus company on and they said no. We asked the council on, they said no. But they have sent us a statement uh, following the decision to change the route of the 68 bus. Um, we uh, ensured the information was widely communicated. No statistics were posted on buses, timetables were distributed. Um, uh, the Bedford Borough Council also obtained the details of school children accessing the service and telephoned them directly at home. Yes, do you know why that happened? Because cool. that happened afterwards, oh. yesterday, when my husband kicked up a fuss and phoned them and said, how about informing the school and the parents? That's only why they then decided to get the, f- the contact numbers from the school and phone the parents. So actually, that's propaganda. That's a lie, actually. Okay. But finally, they phoned the parents, but only when my husband kicked up a fuss and said, what about telling the school? Because the school didn't know anything about it. I mean, uh, listen, we're out of time, but I appreciate you letting us know about this story. Obviously, the, the Beds uh, uh, Borough Council aren't here to uh, defend themselves. I don't know whether that's a lie or not, but um, that's the statement that they issued us. They also say, we've received one complaint regarding the 68 service. Travel news for Beds, Cards and Bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The A40 London bound is queuing between the Denham roundabout and White City, much heavier than normal there. And in Chesant, the A10 southbound is very slow, approaching the M25. On public transport, Chiltern Railways still have delays of up to 40 minutes after an earlier signalling problem. I'm Alice Gloss at BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Alice. Well done. Well squeezed in there. What a busy 15, 30 minutes. It's going to get busier. Coming up, Tony Mortimer from E17, Andy Dave from CBeebies. Mums and dads rejoice! Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Clark, I'm Serena Farrow. The headlines. Former Buckinghamshire school teacher sentenced for historic sex offences. Calls for new rules for dog owners across the three counties. And a hole in a house is filled in. BBC Three Counties Radio. A charity for abused children says some teachers should be tagged and even monitored after a former head teacher was found guilty of historic sex offences at a Buckinghamshire school. Roland Peter Wright was amongst a group of teachers who committed the offences at Caldicott School back in the 90s. 1950s and 60s. Peter Saunders is from the National Association for People Abused in Childhood. When children are abused, they have to live with the consequences for the rest of their life. Today's sentencing must send out a clear signal to society and to everybody in society, do not mess with our children. Turning to the news this morning and a Hertfordshire woman whose pet was brutally attacked now wants the dog licence to be restored. I was walking along a pedestrian road, him on the lead, and I walked past the driveway and the dog leapt out on on the driveway and just mauled him. It wasn't just a dog snapping. Well, after that incident, Susan Smith from Welling Garden City says rules in this country need to be more stringent. We should have the same laws that are in Northern Ireland. Dogs have to be on leads and collars and under control in public zones, certainly on, on the pavement. Now, a massive sinkhole which swallowed a car on a driveway outside a Buckinghamshire home will today be filled with concrete. Zoe Smith's car disappeared down the hole in the early hours of Sunday morning. Tony Fisher has more. 
Wickham District Council says the concrete will be poured into the sinkhole at the house off Main Road in Walters Ash. Further investigation is then planned by engineers to determine the cause. For the time being, though, the collapse of the ground is still thought to be linked to the historic extraction in the area of clay used to make bricks. People in Kempston are worried their fire station may become part-time. Beds and Hearts Fire Service is looking to save money, but as yet nothing's been set in stone. Well, Jamie Newell from the Fire Brigades Union says losing full-timers is likely to put lives in danger. The changing of Kempston from being a whole-time station, which is full-time, to retain status, which is part-time, is not a downgrading because a firefighter is a firefighter. But what it does do is it affects the attendance time because there's an increased duration while you wait for the part-time firefighters to come into the station, get their kit, get on the appliance and go. The security authorities in the United States have warned airlines flying to the Winter Olympics in Russia that terrorists may try to smuggle explosives on board planes in tubes of toothpaste. A US security official says that such devices may be used to assemble a bomb on a flight or upon arrival at the Games. And staying with those Games, and of course they do start this morning with great British athletes competing oh, really? in figure skating oh. and snowboard slope style. They're not sports. They're not sports. Well, apparently they are making their Olympic <sighs> debut. So someone somewhere who knows about sport. There you go. Oh my God. Uh, should we see what the weather's like? But I don't know what the weather's going to be like over there in Russia. It'll be, well... It'll be snowy, it, won't no, it? No, it won't be. It won't be. There are two locations for the Sochi Olympics. Sochi, Sochi, yeah. Sochi, Sochi, naughty, naughty. Uh, one is up in the mountains, it's going to be cold and snowy. Right? Hence, they can do this. Exactly. The other location, it isn't. It's quite warm and temperate there, but what, it's all playing being... playing volleyball there? It's all, shush, it's all being done inside. So the ice skating's being done in quite a warm area. <laughs> Just some in- it's I'm contradictory just- in terms, isn't it, really? No, it's not. OK. Right, anyway, weather. It's going to be bright here and then a little bit rainy. No good if you're skiing. And then we're going to have temperatures a little bit lower than yesterday, 9 degrees. Get the latest news and sports online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. How do I know so much about something that doesn't interest me in the slightest Winter Olympic Sochi fans? Morning, this is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio, here every weekday morning between 6 and 9. JVS takes over at 9 o'clock. Until then, lots to talk about. The former head teacher of a Buckinghamshire school is set to be sentenced today for historic sex offences against boys in his care during the 1950s and the 60s. Well, in a few minutes, we'll be speaking to one of his victims. A Wellin woman is calling for all dogs to be kept on the lead in public after her rescue dog was attacked. How could anybody disagree with that? And also, Tony Mortimer from E17, Andy Day from CBBS, all the big stars. Facebook.com forward slash BBC 3CR. You can send me a text, 81333, start your text 3CR. Or you can give me a call, 08459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Now, big story we've been talking about all morning. The former head teacher of a Buckinghamshire boys' school will be sentenced today for historic child sex offences. Roland Peter Wright was among a group of teachers who abused pupils at Caldicott School in the 50s and 60s. One of Wright's former colleagues, Hugh Henry, who was due to be sentenced today, committed suicide on Tuesday. Well, joining me now is Tom Perry from Amersham, who was one of the first people to report Roland Wright. Morning, Tom. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Ian. Uh, if I ask anything that's inappropriate... I'll let you know. Th- please do. Thank you. Uh, can you take us back? How old were you when, when this happened, and, and, and how, did it, how did it start? Um, well, I was eight when I um, started at the school, and the abuse started when I was 12. It started because I was a rising star in the rugby team, or in, the rugby, in rugby and within the school. And my aspiration was to become the captain of rugby, because these boys who were captains were treated very differently. They were the stars of the school. We were effectively the school's marketing department, and thus the rugby team was coached by Roland Peter Wright. And uh, as we now know um, from the cases that have occurred, Many of these boys were abused, including myself. And this... this uh, how did it start? How did it start? Well, let me explain. Um, Mr Wright was um, very keen on 
um, athletic sporting boys. Mm. And he was a very tactile man. And of course, touching, even if it's a shoulder, even if it's a ruffle of a hair, even if it's a rub on the back of the neck, gradually it breaks down those thresholds, which we all have. And you get used to it. And boys were going in and out of his bedroom, and his bedroom was right next to the uh, senior boys' dormitory, senior boys being no older than 13 years. And um, we would be going in and out of his uh, room regularly, uh, unstopped. There was, a, there was a protocol to that. If you were in the sporting elite, you could do that. If you were anybody else, you certainly couldn't. Mm. There was no lock on the door. You knocked, walked in, that was it. And um, we were entertained. There were elements of home. There was a telly there. You know, I mean, I know this sounds really rather bizarre, but this was sort of all round about 1967. So there were little creature comforts. And this is what I said to you about, you know, the boys who were part of the first 15. They were the elite, and they had privileges. And this was one of the privileges. And we danced around him. Um, it was quite extraordinary when I think about it now. Mm. But at the time, it was utterly normalized. And, of course, when you have all this tactile business going on, it's only a very short step away from it going a lot further. Mm. And that's precisely what happened. And as a, a, a boy, I was going to say young man, but as a boy, yep. how did you feel? Did you appreciate the attention? Did you feel disgusted? What was going through your no, mind? Or have you blocked no, that no. out? It, this is, this is a, the, the, very simply, I mean, we we were... How can I put this? I'm trying to put this gently and politely for mm. your morning listeners. Thank you. We were we were seen, we were put on pedestals, mm. and to be candid with you, it's what everybody sought. Mm. We all sought praise from this man, an urbane, fun, charismatic, E-type Jaguar driving, flat in London. We were all keen to um, receive praise from this man. And, you know, we fell into this enormous trap. That's how it was. And as you grew older, Tom, and got some distance from those events, how did it affect your life? Um, dramatically. Um, dramatically. Uh, gradually, you know, I mean, I, I became an absolute workaholic. Um, we all suffer um, addictions of various types. Um, some, some of our number have ended up as heroin addicts. Um, I know somebody, two people, who are now dead. Um, and we all end up with major issues that we have to address. And, um, you know, there comes a time when gradually you have to face these things, um, and it happens to us at various different stages. Mine happened when my mother was imploding from Alzheimer's. Um, so in other words, I no longer had to worry about the secret coming out. Um, my mother never knew that I was abused. And um, I'd also had children um, with my partner, and my son was getting to that age where, you know, we were considering school. There was an awful lot of stuff that was on the news about clerical abuse in, in America. And I have to say, something went one night. It was an article that I read in a newspaper, in fact. And uh, the explosion happened. And I went to see my um, doctor, and that was in 2000. And I, I, for the first time, made a disclosure. And that was 34 years after the abuse that I experienced as a 12-year-old. And if I may just correct one thing, because it's terribly important, it may seem minor to you, your listeners, this is not historic abuse. It, that's a deeply, and you, you didn't mean it, and I quite accept that, this isn't historic. The sentencing is today. Mm. What's historic about that? And would Doreen Lawrence, mother of Stephen, describe her son's murder as historic? No, it's murder. I wish we'd get over this. Very pleasingly, Chief Constable of Thames Valley no longer... The whole force doesn't describe it as historic abuse, so there we are. I appreciate your correction, Tom. Thank That's you. Right. Pleasure. Uh, Mr Wright was also 
uh, I believe, having affairs with some of the mums. Oh, Lord, yes. Uh, he, he was all over the place. Yes, he was, yes. And, and the mothers thought he was absolutely wonderful. Again, you know, the urbane E-type jag driving charmer, you know, Mr. Smoothie. And um, uh, there was a competition between him and another man that was at the school as to who could bed the most mothers. And I know absolutely, and also si- sisters of the boys who were at the school, um, I know in court today will be a man whose um, sister was dating right. Um, also in court today will be a man whose mother um, was bedded by right. He was bedding the mothers and abusing their sons. I mean, it is just, the whole thing is just surreal, to be candid with you. But that's just as things are. This case has taken a, 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 an incredibly long time to come to court, yes. isn't it? Well, what, why is it so long? Well, the case against Mr Wright, I was the first pupil at Caldecott to speak, and the case against Mr Wright um, was stayed in 2003. And a stay means that it was, it was awarded on the basis of, just to get technical for a moment, the Selwyn Bell precedent, which says, as a result of the passage of time, the defendant cannot receive a fair trial, in brackets, never mind about the, bic- never mind about the victim's close brackets. That dismisses and gets rid of a case. Mm. Now, Mr. Wright then never had to answer the question, and no criminal stay has ever been lifted, so I've not got justice. However, we then had a documentary, and um, uh, created a documentary in 2008, and that won a BAFTA. Uh, it's called Chosen. It was about the architecture of institutional sexual abuse, and many more victims came forward, and more people named more perpetrators. And so, finally, the dam started to break at Caldecott, and it became a point in the end that so many more victims came forward against Mr. Wright that it was felt that no longer could all of the cases by then that had built up be held back anymore. And so, finally, and at last, and very belatedly, Mr. Wright was recharged with new offences, and all the other men um, who had uh, been exposed were also charged. One of those other uh, men was uh, Hugh Henry, who was due to be sentenced today. He killed himself a couple of uh, days ago. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm sorry for all the innocent victims uh, that uh, surround Mr Henry. In every child abuse incident, there is an immense personal car crash. And most of the victims of that car crash are innocents. And that includes members of Mr Henry's family. So I find that tragic, candidly. I'm very sorry for the boys who have complained against Mr. Henry, um, one of whom I knew, I know flew in from Canada for the sentencing hearing and arrived only yesterday. Um, it's almost like trying to grasp a hologram. Mm. And I think that's a tragedy. But there is one further comment that I'd like to make on it. Perpetrators are very controlling people. And Mr. Henry has displayed the ultimate control right at the very end of all this by denying his victims once more. And I find that tragic. Tom, uh, Roland Peter Wright is, is going to be sentenced today. Will any sentence be good enough, in your opinion? Well, this is going to sound most strange, because don't forget, it's not for me to say, because regrettably, my case was stayed. I now have to issue, and I did 10 days ago, issue civil proceedings against Mr. Wright. Mm. Um, The sentence is not the point. Not for me, anyway. Um, It will be to some, I'm sure. But, you know, we we all have different views, and I can only give you mine. Um, I think... I think from one respect, it is important because it will send a very important message to those people who are abusing children today, okay? Um, uh, That is vital, that he gets a strong sentence because of the message it will send. So we will have to wait and see. I wouldn't be surprised if the judge takes full account of that. But what we must all realize is, is that the law that applied in these schools and other institutional settings that applied when I was abused in 1967 hasn't changed. 
if I walk into a room as a member of staff in a regulated activity and I see a child being raped, I am under no obligation in law to report that to anybody. If I do, I'm a, I'm a whistleblower by default. So that gets passed up to, let's just say, the headmaster of the school, who has statutory responsibility for safeguarding. In fact, the governor does, the chairman of the Board of Governors. They are under no compunction to report it. None whatsoever. So for me, personally, this has been about getting a change to the law so that finally and at last, a functioning child protection system grounded on decent law can finally be de delivered in, within regulated activities in all schools. And um, uh, that's why I set up Mandate Now, which is a, a petition, and it is also a campaign, and we're engaged with government on this, to see a change to the law to make child protection within all regulated activities effective. Because at the moment, Reporting child abuse, unbelievably, or suspected child abuse, is discretionary. So you'd like to see it, Tom, if I've got this right, mandatory. If, if a teacher, for example, suspects another teacher of, of uh, abuse, they, they are legally obliged to report it. Yes, because, you see, if you don't have that, there are all too many reasons not to report it. He's my friend. He's more senior than me. It's a hierarchical setting. What will the other people say to me? Will I be isolated within the school? Have I made a mistake? There are a million reasons for not reporting. There are no reasons to report. So you've got to put something in place to remove all that decision-making process. Mm. I must do it. If I don't, this happens. And that's what we need to have done. Tom, you say you've got a campaign. If people want to find out more, where can they go? Yes, if they go to... Um, they just pop onto Twitter, at Mandate Now, all one word, or just put in Mandate Now straight into Google, mm. and then they will see it all set out in very clear form. We've got a five-minute guide on mandatory reporting. We've got the current law. Um, and how children, very simply, you place a child in a school today, no matter what the school tells you, it's not the school's fault. It is the, le it's a, it is the fault of the legislation. It is a hologram, and it delivers almost nothing. Tom, as a dad of two boys, I wish you uh, the best of, uh, uh, you know, I, I wish you the best of luck with your campaign, and yeah, I really I appreciate... you one question, if I may. Please do, You're Tom. You're a dad of two boys. Yeah. Let me ask you, and all parents out there, have you read the child protection policy of your, of your children's school? No, I haven't. Has your wife? I would imagine she possibly has. As she's I very efficient she in those has, things. I'll give you a thousand quid. Oh, OK. And right. to charity. <laughs> <laughs> I will ask her. But she, you, you, I, I, will, I will investigate that, Tom, <laughs> well definitely. Done. Well done. Thank you very much for your time this morning. I really appreciate your honesty. My pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. That's uh, Tom Perry from Amersham. One of the first people to report Roland Wright, who uh, will receive uh, sentencing today. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Right, a little bit later than usual. It's coming up to 8.20. Let's do the uh, headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A charity says there needs to be a change in culture to prevent child abuse. It comes as a former head teacher was found guilty of sex offences at a Buckinghamshire school. A Hertfordshire woman whose dog was brutally attacked wants stricter rules for owners to keep their pets under control. And in sport, the Winter Olympics start in Russia this morning with great British athletes competing in figure skating and snowboard slope style. They're not sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Nick Coffer on BBC Three Counties Radio. Every weekday between 12 and 3, I'm here with a little bit of celebrity. My geography teacher at school resurrected a jazz standard song, which was Won't You Come Home, Bill Bailey. It made me dedicate myself to be trying to be better. I always felt that I wasn't quite good enough. Expert advice. Absolutely, you've got it. You've nailed it. I am so happy. Thank you. And loads of really great music. Nick Coffer. Weekdays from 12 on BBC Three Counties Radio. If I've still got a job, Jonathan, after my chequered career, then I'll be very, very happy. I'm liking this colour on you. Now, what is this? It's is called this like... blue. Well, it's not really, yeah, it is. is it? It's like a... What is that colour? It's a blue. 
Petrol blue, that's it, it's petrol blue. Petrol blue is not a colour. It's a really scruffy old top. What it is, is um, uh, I've got nothing cleaned or ironed at home or anything. I've been living out of a bag for a few days as well. This was the first thing I could find. So Why are you living in this way? Well, I've, I'm kind of mixing up. I'm, I'm finding it up at four o'clock. Really, really hard work. Right. Surprisingly. <laughs> yes. So I've treated myself to a couple of nights in Luton. Oh, gosh. I know. Oh, so With a, this, you're really spoiling us. There's a, there's a cracking Thai restaurant. I found a cracking curry house the other day. I was yeah. the only person oh, in there. Oh, this was a great restaurant. Some wonderful. Uh, and it just means I get an extra hour in bed. <laughs> I, I, I know. I know. I get an extra hour in bed. That's what it's all about. And I'm enjoying it oh, immensely. Okay. So I'm looking very scruffy. Uh, I will... Um, I'll smarten up for tomorrow. No shoes on. No shoes on. I like that. Gosh, it's a very casual Sandy affair. Floor. Yes, very much. You know, I've, I've just I've just tightened my belt as uh, as you came into the studio. I thought it'd be inappropriate to be so relaxed. Yes. What's on your show this morning? Uh, I'm interested in this uh, story you've been discussing about Susan Smith from Welling Garden oh, yes. City, a Hertfordshire dog owner whose King Charles Cavalier Spaniel was subjected to a nasty, unprovoked attack, has called for the dog licence to be restored. Susan Smith from Welling Garden City also wants dogs to be kept on leads on pavements, and as you've also been discussing this morning, a nearby Hatfield town council. Councillors have been forced to replace swing seats because it's alleged owners of aggressive dogs allow their pets to clamp their teeth into them whilst being pushed to strengthen their jaws. Well, this morning at nine, I want to uh, to ask you, have you seen irresponsible dog owners where you live? And if you have, what have you seen them doing? And how do we solve this problem? I've I've got a bit of a, a manifesto mm. to solve our dog problem. Yep. Shall I run it by you? Go on. See what you think. First of all, I think that the dog licence should be brought back. Yep. And I think that anybody that wants to get a dog should have to apply for the licence and they should be tested. Part of the testing would obviously be an intelligence test yep. to see whether or not they've uh, got enough intelligence to own a dog. Uh, they should also have an inspection of their house to yes. see where the dog is going to be kept. Yep. Um, you know, it's ridiculous, the thought of someone getting a great big dog and keeping it in a flat without a garden. Mm-hmm. The dog's going to get frustrated. It's going to be more likely to, to behave badly. So you've got to have the right kind of home for the dog to live in. Um, also, all dogs should be neutered. Yep. The only dogs that should be allowed unneutered are owned by proper registered breeders who have to apply for a separate register in order to be a breeder. Any dog that is caught out on the streets with an with either an owner that hasn't got a licence or has not been neutered when they should have been, that dog should be removed and the owner's got seven days in order to provide the evidence that they have the, the necessary certificate to have that dog. If they don't, then unfortunately the dog will have to be destroyed. That will solve our dog problem. Harsh, but necessary. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Jonathan. I look forward to that. I was just saying, I had to, when I got my cat, I had to have uh, my house inspected by the, the Cats Protection League to make sure it was suitable. The reason we're talking about dogs, a Hertfordshire dog owner whose King Charles Spaniel was subjected to a nasty, unprovoked attack has called for the dog licence to be restored and for dogs to be kept on leads. It's Susan Smith from Welling Garden City. Well, we spoke to her earlier on in the show, and as you just heard, JVS will be talking about it. We can speak now to Ryan O'Mara, who's the publisher of K9 magazine and a former professional dog trainer. Morning, right? It makes sense, doesn't it, to, for dogs in public places to be kept on leads? Well, w- what I would say is that I think we, we need to go further than just have a dog licence. I mean, a licence is, is basically a piece of paper, so it's a bit like saying if you've got an MOT certificate, it makes you a good driver. It doesn't make you a good driver. It just means your car's being inspected. So I would actually have a dog ownership suitability test, which would be more akin to the dog... Uh, sorry, the driving license theory exam, which would which would actually say to people, if you want to have a dog, you have to go out there and earn the right to have a dog. You can't just have one. And I think that there's this view in this country that having a dog is a right, and I think it should be a privilege. It should be a privilege that you earn. And I think that if we look at countries like um, Sweden, I know the Scandinavians do an awful lot of things right, and Sweden certainly does it right when it comes to dog ownership. And they actually make it the law of the land that your dog has to be properly socialised, that has to be properly Mm. trained. And so if you do go out into public and your dog does cause a public nuisance, it's absolutely right you should be prosecuted. Because I think ordinary responsible dog owners 
are certainly going to suffer at the hands of irresponsible dog owners mm. because of the fact the government will ev- will sort of invariably make a knee-jerk legislation that doesn't actually solve the problem if we don't do something that is genuinely focused on making people better dog owners. It is too easy to get one. I could look online now while I'm talking to you, find somewhere within a few miles that someone's selling some dogs and go and pick them up after the show, couldn't I? You could, and, and I think you've hit, hit the nail on the head there. As, as easy as it is to get one, it's just as easy to breed one. And so it's ultimately it's the people that are irresponsibly breeding and supplying dogs that perpetuate this vicious cycle. So if I'm an irresponsible, idiotic dog owner or, or would-be dog owner, I go to a good breeder and they, they look me up and down and they say, actually, I don't think you're cut out for a dog, and they send me away. My next step is to look in the free ads paper, mm. and, and invariably I will end up at somebody that doesn't really care whether I'm a good dog owner or not. No. So you get the irresponsible supplying the irresponsible, and then we have this massive welfare crisis in the country where there's 100,000 dogs that are in shelters. So we, we do have to do something, otherwise we can expect more of the same. I mean, we've seen eight people die as a result of dog attacks. We've seen dog-on-dog attacks in public places, and I think that Rather than sort of hammer responsible dog owners by saying, look, all dogs have to be on a lead, which would actually cause bigger problems because you have to give dogs the opportunity to exercise, what we should do is focus on the fact that there are some people who haven't trained their dogs, punish those people, make those people train their dogs, and then everybody can be sort of happy in the knowledge that responsible owners are being picked out. Ryan, what about certain places, though? Dogs on leads on paper. How about if we, we just put over certain parts of parks where dogs can go and they can be off lead, but on pavements, near kiddies' play areas, places like that, they have to be on leads. How about that? Absolutely sensible. No, nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, that's what they do in America. There is a much bigger prevalence of dog parks in America um, for that very reason, I think, and, and again, on pavements, it's the law of the land that, that a dog should be on a lead. And I'm always horrified to see people walking along with their dog off the lead you know, on, on a busy street. It, it frightens me to death. I'm a dog trainer and I wouldn't do it. Mm. And so, you know, I just think that that's against the law of the land. Police can take action there and they should take action. Similar to where you get people hanging around parks letting their dogs basically terrorise other people. That, again, is against the law of the land. So I'm one of these people that says, if we are going to legislate, let's do something that actually works. And I just think bringing in the dog licence is is a lot of bureaucracy that doesn't actually improve the level of knowledge of dog owners. It just makes people register them. Mm. So they're still bad dog owners. They've just got a piece of paper to prove it. Ryan, I really appreciate your time this morning. It's Ryan O'Mara, publisher of K9 magazine. If you want to have a look at that, I'm sure if you Google it, you'll be able to find all the details you want. 08459 455 555. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Speed sensors, all of the approaches to the Clop Hill roundabout looking very slow at the moment. The A1M southbound struggling at Junction 7 for Stevenage and the A40 London bound queuing between the Denham roundabout and White City much heavier than normal as people take the roads instead of the underground while the strikes are going on. The N25 anti-clockwise queuing between 21 for the M1 and 16 for the M40. And on public transport, Chiltern Railways have delays of up to 40 minutes on services via Marlebone. I'm Alice Cross at BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Good morning with the headlines, I'm Serena Faro. A man who was sexually abused as a child at a Buckinghamshire school now wants to legalise the reporting of child abuse by teachers who either know or suspect it's happening. It comes as a former head teacher at that school is being sentenced today for sex offences. Elsewhere, a Hertfordshire woman whose dog was brutally attacked wants stricter rules for owners to keep their pets under control. And as we've been here in JVS, we'll be asking the question, have you seen irresponsible dog owners where you live? The security authorities say terrorists may try to smuggle explosives in tubes of toothpaste on planes flying to the Winter Olympics. And a massive sinkhole which swallowed a car on a driveway outside a Buckinghamshire home will today be filled with concrete. Zoe Smith's car actually disappeared down the hole in the early hours of Sunday morning. There are your news headlines. Now let's move on to the sport. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
Nottingham Forest beat Preston 2 0 last night to seal an FA Cup fifth round tie against Sheffield United. Forest manager is Billy Davies. Well, we have played lots of games this season where we've dominated so many games and not come away with the points that we should have won. Tonight it was the opposite. Tonight we didn't play well. Tonight we didn't pass the ball well. Tonight we didn't compete well enough. And quite simple, the home team deserved to win the match. The home team were better than what we were. And uh, a lot of credit to the home team for doing what they're doing. Moving on to cricket, and Michael Vaughan's ruled himself out of the running to coach the England team and has recommended the former South African and Indian coach Gary Kirsten as Andy Flower's successor. Vaughan also doesn't hold out much hope for the success of England at the T20 World Cup. You've got to remember, they say they're moving for the future. We've got a World Cup in five weeks. A World yeah. Cup that England have won only two times ago. I don't, think England, have, I don't think England have got any chance. Staying with England, but this time rugby, Stuart Lancaster will name his side for this weekend's Six Nations game in just an hour's time. Singles wins for Heather Watson and Joe Conter helped Great Britain to a 2-1 tennis win over Latvia. That was in their opening Fed Cup group match in Budapest. And finally, the 2014 Winter Olympics start in Russia this morning. Great British athletes compete in figure skating and snowboard slope style, which is making its Olympic debut. BBC Three Counties Radio, more from me at night. On FM, AM, online and digital radio. Gosh. This is... We haven't got time for that. We've got a lot to cram in between now and nine o'clock, including Tony Mortimer from E17. Andy from CBBS is going to be interviewed by my sons and uh, Catherine's daughters. And also Ken in Luton talking about dogs. Morning, Ken. Morning, Ian. What do you got for me, boss? Well, all these things you're going to have put in place, eh? who's going to... Uh... Who's that in the background? Tell them to shut up. Shut up! Thank you. Right. That's the grandchildren. Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> no respect. No respect. <laughs> broken, broken Britain, Ken. That is what the, the trouble is, Ian. People who are responsible dog owners will get a dog licence. Yes. Other people will not get a dog licence. Then we confiscate the dog... I'm not so hot on the dog licence. I don't quite know what the dog licence will do, but... Because well, it would do nothing. Well, it wouldn't do a lot. Uh, 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 but, but keeping dogs on leads when you're out and about, yes, please, we'll have some of that. Yes, that's fine. That is I agree with. Why would anyone want to own a dog anyway? They're horrible pets. Don't talk. Oh, How old, my wife? You've just said that in front of my wife, Ian. I- I'll say it again, love. They're horrible pets. Yeah, well, what about... What have humans? She's bonkers. What have humans got to do with anything? What's, what's your? I'm terribly sorry that your daughter's had her house burgled. That's awful. But what's that got to do with dogs? Dogs don't let you down, they say. But they are. Of course, dogs don't let you down. What about when dogs attack people? Well, they are other people's dogs, aren't they? I mean, if they're on leads and muzzled, I'd say, Ian, if they're muzzled, they can't bite no one. Right. Have you got, have you got dogs, Ken? I have. Yeah, what, what are they? Uh, greyhounds. Oh, flipping it. Ugly things. No, they're not. They're, they're Hideous things. It's a bag of bones. Oh, yes. They're built for speed, not comfort. Right. So, I've had greyhounds. What are you talking about? The dogs or your missus? Well, both, I think. OK. <laughs> No, I think they're, they're very, very Get nice. a nice cat. Get a nice cat, Ken. A cat will never let you down. Well, so you say, but I'll, cool. I'll get it to play with a dog, shall I? Oh, for goodness sakes, Ken. Thank you very much indeed. Sorry to hear about your daughter's uh, recent incident. Andy's in Letchworth. Morning, Andy. Good morning. How are we? Y- you're not going to have a, a, a mad wife shouting at me, are you? No, no such thing in my household. Good for you. Well done. When I say mad, I mean uh, angry. I don't mean um, bonkers just before that gets uh, nasty. Uh, what have you got for me, Andy? OK, I think that the, the chat that was talking about the dogs, I mean, I did tune in late, I just literally turned the radio on and I heard the end of what he was saying and I thought a lot of it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, we got a dog from a green animal shelter and it was absolute hell to get the dog. It was so hard. Really? We had to take every- oh, it was unbelievable. We had to take everyone that lived in the house, we had to take everyone that regularly visits us to go and meet the dog first and in the end we got told we couldn't have that one because I was wearing glasses. And what? the dog was scared of glasses. That was unbelievable. The dog was, was so scared hard. of glasses? Oh, uh, she came to... This was on the home visit. She came to the house and she said, I could see why the dog was nervous at first. There's two clear, two, two clear reasons in my vision. Yeah. Firstly, Blimey. the colour of your skin. And secondly, you're wearing glasses. And it was just the most ridiculous statement to come out with. Flipping heck. Uh, <laughs> but my point is... Yes. 
if it's that difficult to get a dog in a dog's home, then the homes are kind of doing the right thing. They might go a little bit too far. It's yes. £120, etc. So a licence could be issued at that point by the dog's home. I think the problem really lies by way of these sort of, you know, street-type people who are breeding dogs for an income with no reason to be breeding dogs for an income and they've got no experience, the dogs are wild, they're going out to people who are also not the best sort of dog owners. There's no policing as far as who can get a dog and who's allowed to breed and hand a dog out and I think that is the biggest problem. Uh, Andy, I appreciate your, your time on that. 08459 455 555. Now, to my production team next door. Catherine Boyle. And Kelly Betts. Oh, right, yeah. Good morning to you both. Yep. Good, good morning. How are you, Kelly? I'm very, very well, thank you. Catherine, yourself? I'm excited. You owe me, ladies. What? This is my sexiest voice, by the way, that I'm putting on. What? It is. You owe me, both of you, mm. a big apology. Where you go. Well, hang on a minute. Let's Wait. just let's just have a little think about this. Big apology. I'm, I'm d- you told us you knew Chaz and Dave. Yeah. We got Chaz and you know, on. Chaz and Dave's stepson, nephew, His whatever. Son in law, yep. Okay. Then you told us, who else does he say he knows? Oh, everyone. So when you said Tony Mortimer off of E17. Big friends. I mean, it's reasonable that we would doubt you. Yeah. I'm willing to apologise. Away you go. Ian Lee. Yeah. I'm so very sorry. Catherine. You were right. Apology, Catherine. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, Tony Mortimer from E17's on the line. Morning, Tony. Good morning. He's kidnapped me. Th- I'm at his house in a cupboard. I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> I was in the pub. And then I got bundled into a van. Shut it, Mortimer. All right. Shut it. Now, listen, can you t- l- tell my team, you and me, we go w- literally way back. Years. You see? He's been tweeting you for ages, hasn't he? He has. He's, you know, he's been stalking me. And <laughs> I've, I've notified the police three times. And this was, the, this was the deal we cut. Our lawyers cut a deal. He'd come on the radio show <laughs> if I stopped hassling him <laughs> online. How are you doing, Tony? You all right? I'm doing well, yeah. Not too bad at all. What are you up to at the moment? Um, I've just done a, a little solo album where I'm doing a bit of chirping on it. Oh. Called, uh, Songs from the Suitcase that I've kind of collected over the last few years. Yeah. Uh, I'm, out, I'm out doing that at the moment, doing the rounds. Are you doing some gigs and stuff? Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to speak to some promoters and um, I've got, got, I just signed a, a record deal for four albums and stuff. Hey, so. blimey. Because yeah, you've uh, listen, I, I I I remember interviewing you a few years ago and was telling you you're a cracking songwriter and you kind of played it down a little bit, going, "Well, I don't know, I don't." But you've written some pop classics. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, I think I'm just I've I've been writing songs since I was a, like you know fourteen, and it, it's kind of what I do. But then I know what I'm like, and I know that sometimes I write absolute stinkers. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> But listen, you stay another day, right? Yeah. Even if you never wrote another song. Even yeah. if you never never wrote another song, right? Yeah. You, uh, you've written a pop classic. Thank you. And you've written more than one pop classic. Aww. So what have, you been do- what have you been doing for the last few years? Well, since the band, I guess, uh, raising a family, all that, all that happens in your life. Yeah. Um, How uh, old are your kids? Uh, oh, gosh, 18 and 20. What? Yeah. What? 18 and 20. I had them when I was three. What? I was going to say, what, they are 18 months? 18 and 20 years old? Yeah, yeah. That's He's a man. Crazy. You're a proper grown-up now, Tony. That's oh, official. You know, it's just a matter of time before I'm a granddad, isn't it? You're really? old enough to be my dad. Oh, my God. Kelly, uh, can, I, can I be honest? Could you stop flirting with him? Because this is really uncomfortable. I can't help. <laughs> Tony, I have a very important question for you. OK. It's from my cousin Christine, who is a huge fan of yours. Hi, Christine. Are you still fit? <laughs> <laughs> well, as you get older, you become more fat. <laughs> <You can't>. So no. <laughs> but I, st- I still train and stuff, so yeah. my heart and lungs are healthy. That's yeah, he's buff. <laughs> he's buff is what he's saying. Because <laughs> I saw you uh, very kindly invited me to come and see E17 a couple of years ago without Brian Harvey. You still not yeah. talking to him? Oh, no, no, it's not, we're not talking to him. Come on, you had a big falling out, you didn't get on with him, he was a Muppet, and you sacked him and you got someone in. <laughs> is that what happened? <laughs> that was all a long time ago. That was oh. like five years in, in, in the space of three seconds, you just said that. Oh, OK. <laughs> Um, so I haven't spoke to him. We tweeted each other a little while uh, last year. Well, yeah. a lot happened last year. It's only just started a new one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so we tweeted each other, and yeah, things are cool. There's no hard feeling. Okay. Is there any chance you lot getting back and doing something? I don't know. I mean, I don't know where Brian's Brian's at or yeah. anything like that, really. To be honest, so I don't know. Maybe in the future, see where he's where he's at, where his head's at, what he's doing. 
Tony, totally stay there. Justin Dealey does a music show on Saturday mornings. Yeah. Morning, Justin. Morning, guys. Morning, we got, Tone. We got Good Tony morning. on. Oh, the legend that is. <laughs> Fantastic. Legend. Uh, yeah, you are a legend. Absolutely. <laughs> Ian, this morning I have been out onto the streets of Beds, Hearts and Bucks, yep. and Lovely. I have been talking E17. This is a reporter's dream. Yep. Tony, people love you. Take a listen to this. Here we are, Lee. You are listening to the Ian Lee Breakfast Show. Tony Mortimer from E17's coming on. You were a massive fan of E17, weren't you? I was, yeah. Um, I enjoyed their Christmas number one, Stay Another Day. Yeah, yeah that was wicked. Stay yeah. now, stay now. Stay another day. <laughs> what on earth was that, Lee? <laughs> Dunno. <laughs> it's a bit early. With, with this hat you're wearing today, you almost look a bit like Brian Harvey. Get out. You're still living the dream, aren't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Morning, sir. What's your name? I'm your friend. What are you doing at 8.30 this morning? I'm going to work. Oh, Tony Morsimer from East 17 is going to be live on the show. Yeah, but uh, I'm not really familiar with this name. I'm sorry. What, uh, East 17? They were huge back in the 1990s. Where were you back in the 1990s? No, oh, back home in the Philippines. So East 17 weren't very big in the Philippines? No. Here's somebody else. Your friend tells me that you were a huge East 17 fan. Is that true? Massive, mate. What, what did you love about East 17 so much? The white suits the lot. Joy, East 17, you have a local connection. Tell us more about your local connection. Um, I used to go to college with one of the brothers. Um, I can't remember what his name is. I think it was John Hendy's brother. We used to do music technology together back at um, Oakland's college. Yeah, it was pretty cool, and he's a good guy. He was really nice to me and everything, so yeah. So you had a connection to their music? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I liked East 17 when I was growing up, so... What was your favourite East 17 track? It's the one they did with Gabrielle. Um, and if you ever fall in love again I will be sure that the lady is a friend Yeah, that was Wow, that was incredible. <laughs> Lisa, we are rolling back the years today. Tony Morsimer from East 17 live on the show. Okay. East 17, your memories. Um, they were a great, really brilliant band. Um, they sang really, really well and Brian Harvey was my favourite. So. Did you find Brian Harvey sexy? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> what was it about Brian Harvey? Everything. <laughs> Everything. Just lovely man. Just general nice guy. What about Tony Mortimer? Tony's going to be on the show. Do you want to say hi to Tony right now? Hello, Tony, and you're a brilliant songwriter, and I think you're amazing. You Now, listen, that girl singing, Tony, she wasn't bad, was she? She weren't bad at all, actually. You want to get, we'll get, we'll get her did, number did to you. you. Get her number? I was we, going to say, that's amazing. You went to all that trouble. That's fantastic. Well, that's, that's Justin Dealey. That's what you're doing, it just. That's what I do. And what there is, it? listen, it might sound like our tongue is in our cheek. There is genuine affection for you, Tony, that I'm not sure you necessarily know, is, know exists. Well, he's heard it there, hasn't he? Uh, that's really nice, yeah. That's really nice. Listen, what we want you to uh, do, I want you to go and do some solo concerts. I want you to go out there and play some songs and do some gigs and, and let people, you know, give you the love. Yeah, I'm up for that. I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm going to book you. I'm not That's a promoter amazing. or anything. That was really lovely. Thank you very much. That's made my day. Oh, well, I'm really pleased. Tony, listen, wh- what's the new record and where can people get it? Uh, the, new, the, the new album is called Songs from the Suitcase. And I, where, do, where do people get things to dad? I don't know. iTunes, <laughs> I get okay, Amazon and that. You are such a dad. <laughs> you are such a... Get it on all these electronic devices. All that, all their mod cons. You're on tw- Twitter as well. What are you on Twitter? At Tony I, Mortimer? To- yeah, at... at Tony um, underscore Mortimer, yeah. I'm adding you now so you can be my friend. <laughs> That's it, let's I'm get in. it on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get it on. Uh, d- 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 did you, I mean, do you still get big fat checks in from, from back in the day? Is that how you support yourself? Yeah, really, yeah. Well, not big fat checks. But enough. But, but enough, yeah. Do you not miss it, though? Do you not miss, like, going out and doing concerts and being on Top of the Pops and producing and stuff like that? Um, oh, I really miss Top of the Pops. Yeah. I really miss Top of the Pops. Um, touring and that is crazy, so that's that's not bad. I mean, I've done, I've, I've been there, done it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm quite happy and I'm very sort of, sort of, yeah, I'm happy in myself of Good. what I've achieved and that. Good. But, but yeah, I think if, if anything, I really miss Top of the Pops. That was amazing. It was a good programme, wasn't it? Yeah. Is it, it not on Thursday nights iconic. anymore? They've got rid of that one, which is a shame. Tony, listen, you're a really good sport. I, I appreciate your time this morning, uh, and uh, I wish oh, you the best you. of luck with the new record. Thanks very much, and uh, have a good day, and hi to all your listeners. Tony, thank you very much indeed. That's how old I am. I'm calling it a record, for goodness sakes. Tony Mortimer, what a lovely bloke. Thank you, Tony. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. In Watton at Stone, the A602 southbound, heavy going at Ware Road, and the A40 London bound really struggling today with queues between the Denham roundabout and White City. 
The M40 northbound is also slow from the Denham roundabout up to the M25. And on public transport, Chiltern Railways has delays of up to 40 minutes on services via Marlebone after an early signalling problem. Also, the Metropolitan Line has trains running today every 10 minutes between Harrow on the Hill and Aldgate, and now also between Uxbridge and Harrow on the Hill every 20 minutes. I'm Alice Gloss at BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, it's it's thank you, Alice. It's agreed here. Tony Mortimer, the nicest bloke in the world. I don't want to put any pressure on our next guest, Andy Day from CBBS, but he's going to have to work hard to follow that. Right, eight forty-six. It's uh, Thursday the 6th of February, I'm Ian Lee These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio A man who was sexually abused as a child at a Buckinghamshire school wants to legalise the reporting of child abuse by teachers who either know or suspect it's happened Sorry, want to make it mandatory, the reporting of child abuse The security authorities in America say terrorists may try to smuggle explosives in tubes of toothpaste on planes flying to the Winter Olympics And in sport, Uh, the games in Russia get underway this morning with great British athletes competing in figure skating and snowboard slope style. Weather with Elizabeth. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Very good morning to you. It's dry through this morning, but unfortunately we do have some more wet weather headed our way into this afternoon. We could just see a few stray showers over the next couple of hours or so. We'll probably have to wait until, well, mid-morning, first part of the afternoon before we start seeing the constant outbreaks of rain. That's going to last for the rest of the afternoon into this evening and overnight and only really stop once we get to the middle part of the morning tomorrow. Uh, In terms of how much rainfall, we're probably expecting to see just under an inch of, of the wet weather, particularly for southern areas of the three counties. We've got a Met Office weather warning out, not just for today, but also for tomorrow and for Saturday, which is looking really quite stormy indeed. So dry for the next few hours, then rain spreading in from the south and the west. It's going to turn quite heavy by the time we get to the early evening rush hour and through much of the overnight period as well. Top temperatures today up to around 7 or 8 degrees Celsius. It's more or less what we've got at the moment too. Um, So yeah, not feeling all that nice underneath the rain, of course, uh, but we have lost those gusty winds from yesterday now as we head through tonight it's going to keep on raining it's going to keep on coming basically the winds will pick up as we head into tomorrow morning uh, the rain turning showery for tomorrow morning's rush hour still some heavy bursts on it though at times and it will be much drier by the time we get to tomorrow afternoon even some spells of sunshine but remaining quite blustery tomorrow then a little bit of a respite before it all turns very wet and very windy again on saturday you finished you're right. Have. Is that enough rain for you? No, it just, it just, you just kind of petered out at the end. Oh, sorry. I thought I wasn't meant to give you an on Saturday, but I could carry on into next week, which is still looking unsettled. No, 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 no. We'll stop there. You finished? <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. On Saturday afternoon, Watford, MK Dons, Stevenage, Wickham, Luton and Bedford are all in action. He's round Kuchek, he must score! Boris Vieri does score! And it's Darius Charles who forced the ball in! Which means we'll offer you live commentary from the Championship, League One and the Conference. And MK Dons make it 2-0 and from nothing Luton take the lead! Hear your local team with Three Counties Sport. Saturday from 2, here on BBC Three Counties Radio. I've just made the call. Tony Morto can be released from the cupboard under the stairs now. The uh, the deal has been struck. Morning, this is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Um, here every weekday morning between six and nine. Um, if, is, is, is our next guest lined up or has he um, been, been a bit of a star? Been a bit, a little bit of a star? Is, the, these t- you know these TV types? They often get a little bit full of themselves, don't they? A little bit arrogant. A little bit upsy-daisy. Well, we're, we're, we're waiting, uh, Andy, from CBeebies, to, uh, to join us. And I suspect, I suspect he's running rings around the production team, de- making demands, asking for all kinds of things. Andy Day from CBeebies, good morning! Good morning, sir, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Are you causing trouble for my team? What's going on, mate? Yeah. <laughs> What's going no, on? Of course I'm not, of course I'm not. We, now listen, we just had Tony Mortimer on from E17. If I'm honest, the nicest bloke in the world. It was such a good interview, Andy. We, we considered for a second sacking you off. 
No way. Don't say that. Because you were late as well. I was thinking, you know, I was right by the phone, quarter two. I think, oh, no. He's not going to call. He was, sucking, he was sucking right up to Tony Mawson. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't sucking up. He's a good mate of mine. And yeah. Andy's a good mate of mine as well. You've been tweeting him. That doesn't count we as a mate. We are good mates. We are good mates. We've we even... go way back. Yeah, yeah, you see. Now, Andy, listen. For those who don't know, uh, if, if you've not got a kid who's um, under five years old, you'll have no idea who this gentleman is, which is a shame. You should do, because you're brilliant. Uh, you're one of the CBBs. Uh-huh. Presenters, you're the tall fellow with the big bushy hair. That's you, um, you, I mean, re- like really tall. It's been ridiculously tall. What's going on That's there? Almost as tall as you. You're taller than me, man. No, we're the same height. Well, your height adds an extra. Your hair adds an extra six inches. My hair, my hair's bigger than yours. It's very, very bushy. Uh, but we, but you're, we think you're brilliant in our house. I've got two young lads, oh, four and two. Thank you. Catherine, you've got girls. Two what do girls, girls, girls. What do girls? Five. What do girls think of Andy? They think you're my mate. I told him I'd phoned you up a couple of times through work, you know. <laughs> but they assume that we're now friends. So now, whenever you come on, he says, "Oh, look, there's your friend Andy, mummy." Now look, we know oh, you're, you're doing a show. Then, you're doing a show in Dunstable um, uh, soon. I will let you plug and, it. And Radley. I will, and Radley. All right, calm down, calm down. <laughs> I, I, plug in. I will no. I will let him plug it if this interview, if he answers the questions well enough. Now, okay. What am I going to ask a guy from CBeebies? I don't know. Not a lot. But my four-year-old. <laughs> Uh, and Catherine, which, which, which both, both two, of your the girls, two and the five-year-old, they have they have set the questions. Oh, okay. So here comes question number one. This is from my four-year-old boy. Have a listen. How do you get out of your building thing? So Andy, how do you get out of your building thing? Okay, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, standard CBB's magic, really. Oh. Um, you know, a click of the fingers, uh, a few magic words, and then I'm out. Okay. And uh, it, it, it involves a lot of running around and getting from place to place in a matter of seconds. Okay. Um, yeah, it's difficult. So there's difficult. there's a lot of magic involved. Good, good, good answer. Good answer. Good. Which one of yours shall I go for, uh, Catherine? Um, if you do the. Uh, Father Christmas one, that's my five-year-old. OK, let's have... This is Catherine's five-year-old. Hello, Andy. Do you know Father Christmas? Oh, good question. Well, do you? Oh, <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, he comes every year to the CBB's house, and we always know about it. Um, he's, he's good friends with us, uh, yeah, at CBB's. Can I hear, he can I hear Andy it. typing an email to his agent saying, <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> Get me out of here. Quick, quick, someone, make a phone call. <laughs> what's the, listen, what's that Alex like? <laughs> I'm, Alex. I'm suspicious oh, of he's Alex. He's a troublemaker. Yeah, he's a I'm troublemaker. suspicious of him. Yeah, he's a troublemaker. He's he's uh, you know he's he's short. What can I say? He's short. He's half he's half the size of me. Um, you could put him in your pocket. <laughs> Literally, he's, I mean, he had the idea for Grandpa in my pocket. We was going to call it Alex in my pocket. Oh, by the way, um, the, the new Grandpa in oh, my pocket. Yeah. Oh, what have they? I know you can't comment, but but Catherine and I, what have they done to the new Grandpa in my pocket? Oh, no, why did, did you not like it? I, it all seems a bit green-screened, and I'm not so keen on those two, two young kids that are in it. I don't think they're as good as the original fella. I know he's grown well, up. It's a bit too big now. It's always like a, a sequel to something. It's yeah. always hard to, to bear, isn't it? So, um, so it takes a little bit of getting used to. But I think, I think you're, you're adapted to it. I, okay. think, you know. I tell you a programme we do, like your programme, where you and Kip, where you go off around the world. Oh, thank you, yeah. It's good fun. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's brilliant. It's, 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 a, like, it's a natural history kind of thing where you get to go and look at weird animals. But you were a frog yesterday, so you were covered in it. <laughs> we uh, we just straw, straw, uh, poison dart frog, was it? <laughs> no, the big uh, African bullfrog. So you were up to your oh, knees. Oh, the big African bullfrog. Swamp. Oh, OK. Well, you know that there's, uh, uh, in fact, in two weeks' time, here's another plug, uh, Andy's Dinosaur Adventures. What? Whoa. Yeah. Really? So uh, oh, if man. you like... If you like um, animals, you're going to love the dinosaurs because, um, yeah, I go back in time. I've got a grandfather clock that takes me back in time. I work at a museum oh, now. Mate. You're and, toying uh, with my dreams, Andy. No, honestly. Oh, the, boys, the boys are going to love this. And the thing about CBeebies I like, serious for a second, right? We're very, very careful. And I'm sure you're the same, Catherine. We're very careful at what we let the kids watch. We don't let them watch CITV. We don't let them watch any. It's CBeebies because... They'll have a laugh. You feel safe. You feel safe. You'll have a laugh with things like Grandpa in My Pocket. And uh, then you've got Old Jack's Boat. But you've also got the stuff like your programmes, like Nina and the Neurons, uh, like um, I Can Cook, where it's entertaining, but they're actually learning something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you find that um, most of the comments you get from parents, actually, is that, you know, you feel very, very safe. 
uh, to, to put your kids in front of the, the TV because you know that the the content is going to be it's going to be uh, educational and it's going to be it's going to be fun as well for the for the kid. I think a lot of the parents. I mean, you guys could comment on this. A lot of the parents like watching it as well. It kind of. Um, it's, it's quite entertaining yeah. for you guys. Oh, it's, it, I, I, yes, I, you could be sat in front of worse stuff with the kids. We've got time for two more quick questions from the kids. Catherine, which one of yours would you like? Numbers, that's uh, my two-year-old. Uh, OK, this is, this is uh, from Catherine's two-year-old. My favourite mm-hmm. number is two. What's yours? What's your favourite number, Andy? My favourite number is 15. It's my lucky number. <laughs> Good <Right>. answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what this one is. This is from my boy. Hang on. How do you get in the other programme, Andy? Oh, you kind of answered this. How do you get into the other programmes? Like I said, a lot of magic. A lot of CBB's magic. He's very interested and, in access, and, uh, isn't he? And Alex and Kerry and, and uh, Katie and sometimes myself link me into it. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, well, let, I'm going to squeeze in one more question from my boy. Hang on a second. Andy, do you have any doors in your house and any windows? He was eating celery. Uh, he was eating uh, cucumber at the time. But, do, <laughs> okay. Andy, do you have any doors and windows in your house? <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, well, I actually live... Uh, uh, are you talking about the CBB's house? Yeah, where the CBB's where house? you live, yes. CBB's house, yes. The, uh, there are doors and windows. There's a nice big window. Uh, we can see out. Sometimes it changes from uh, a Christmas scene to uh, a summery scene. Uh, in fact, next week is a dinosaur scene. Fantastic. So there's, uh, there's, we see quite a lot through that window. Last question from the kids. How did you get to be so famous? <laughs> and it must be, because you are, to these kids, OK, you are a huge star, aren't you? <laughs> well, it, it's it's um, it's the first thing that they watch really is because they're kids. They're watching children's TV, so I suppose we're the we're the first uh, we're the first people that they they watch and learn from. And I've been to um, one of your live shows before, and we had to. The, the boy was a little bit too young for that one, and we had to leave because he got quite upset. But yeah. not your fault. We took him too young. But you, they scream at you like pop stars. <laughs> They go mad. Ah, oh, it's very sweet. Yeah, it's it's lovely. Listen, it's, you it's passed the test. Lovely. You passed the test, Andy Day. What's I what's did it. what's your I show? Did it. What's your show? Where is it? And where can we see it? It's Andy and Mike's TikTok Time Machine. It's a follow-up to the show that you saw, Big Box of Bananas. Yep. You can get look at the dates on andyandmike.com, and we're playing um, at Dunstable Grove, and we're also playing at Radlett Centre at the half term, the 21st and 23rd of Feb. So the 23rd is Dunstable Grove, and 21st is Radlett Centre. And it's, it's noisy, and it's silly, and it's ridiculous. It's a time machine. There's loads of stuff for the parents as well, and loads of interaction, but it's, it's good fun. Oh, well, listen... You should Just, come and see it. You should come. You should well, both come and see it. Well, 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 well uh, Andy, let's let's be honest. Are we paying or are they freebies? No, they're freebies, of course. Andy, get day. Them. That's all we wanted. <laughs> you passed. Give us give us the website again so people can get the details. Andyandmike.com. All right, mate. Listen, you're a, you're a really good sport. I appreciate you coming on. And Thank you, mate. And keep keep on doing the good work. I'm looking forward to that dinosaur program because I know my boys are going to love it. Excellent. Thanks, Ian. Andy, Cheers, mate. see you later on. Thank you. Oh, we didn't get him to sing What's on Your Plate. Or a rap. Oh, like the number rap. We ran out of time. What nice people we've had on this morning, haven't we? Yeah. Absolutely delightful. Norm, we'll go back to the normal grumpy cynicism tomorrow. Don't you worry about that. Andy Day from CBeebies. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. In Roxton, the A1 is queuing in both directions at the Black Cat roundabout. In Dunstable, the A5 heading towards the centre of town is busy going from the Ashton Middle School to the West Street traffic lights. M25 clockwise, slow between 24 for Potter's Bar and 25 for Enfield. And on public transport, the Chiltern Railways has delays of up to 50 minutes on services via Marlebone after an earlier signalling problem. On the Metropolitan Line, there are trains every 10 minutes between Harrow on the Hill and Aldgate and between Uxbridge and Harrow on the Hill every 20 minutes. I'm Alice Gloss at BBC Three Counties Radio. Alice, thank you very much. Thank you, dear listener, for indulging us being slightly different, having two guests at the end of the show. We don't normally do that, but I thought we'd make a change. Thank you to Tony, thank you to Andy. JBS is up next until tomorrow at six from me. Ta ta. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Ian. Good morning. Welcome to the JVS Show. I'm Jonathan Vernon-Smith. It's Thursday. It's nine o'clock. And on today's big phone-in. Have you seen irresponsible dog owners where you live?